Peace, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Underground Railroad Radio with your host, Rich, and your co-host, Brother Joel. Brother Joel, are you there? Yeah, hi, that's your nigga, a.k.a. Bishiba. Okay, peace, y'all. The calling number, y'all, are 646-727-2039. The name of today's show is The Power of Mythology with the one and only Bobby Hennett. Um, before we get into the show, I want to make a quick announcement. Brother A.A. A. Rashid and Brother Black Dot is having a lecture this Sunday um, in Brooklyn, New York at the Fort Greene Senior Citizen Center. The lecture is going to start at around, uh, I believe it's, it's supposed to start at 2 o'clock. And for more information on that lecture, you can contact Brother A.A. A. Rashid at 718-506-4518. They're going to be dealing with um, the global takeover of hip-hop, I believe it's called. You know, Black Dot, you know, he's like one of the experts when it comes to that hip-hop thing. So uh, they're going to be dealing with that. More power to them. Go out there and uh, support the brothers. Um, for repeat broadcasts of this show or for past shows, go to the website, www.undergroundrailroadnet.com. Um, but to get into the show, let's bring on our brother Bobby Hammett. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we got you, brother. Well, hello. First of all, New York. Hello, uh, the globe, because, you know, we are broadcasting all over the world. Yes, yes. Uh, new day now. World Wide Web, you know. <laughs> so I'm getting calls. I think I got a white girl from... Czechoslovakia called me. Man. You know, people are calling and stuff. Got people from Russia. So not only this thing is not this global, this shit is damn uh, multiracial. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This thing is this thing is, is going off the chain. So it's mm. uh, you know uh, got people from Sweden. Got some brothers from Sweden. What is a nigga doing in Sweden? <laughs> but they're there. You know they're there. They're all you know. They got a whole German crew that, you know, they had them war babies over there. Yeah. And then they, you know, in America been, I think they got, what, five army bases over there since World War II? So they got an entire crew of people, you know. And just about wherever you think this globe is, you're going to find some some black people there, too. But I'm getting all types of people. I got a brother that came to the, came, um, to the lecture in London from Afghanistan, you right. know what I'm saying, you know, yeah. uh, born and raised in Afghanistan and stuff, you know, and mm -hmm. stuff, so we got people from all over, so that's cool, yeah. yes, so, all right, the, the, the name of today's show, Brother Bobby, is, mm -hmm. oh, oh, real, real, real quick, Brother Bobby, um, I had a couple people who um, wanted to know the number to contact you. For the um, angelic stimulus package. Stimulus so package. We get, well, it's yeah. interesting. You, we put that infomercial out there first, so that was the first thing I was going to say. So uh, um, to get the angelic stimulus package, let me give you a rundown of things that, that we have available. Um, the angelic stimulus package, which consists of a check, um, that you, a spiritual check that you sign and uh, for $2,500, uh, which will give you, and I have to reiterate, it will give you the money monetarily as well as it might just come as uh, $2,500. Like one person got a $2,500 raise. Somebody might give you $2,500. Um, so it comes like that, but it's a spiritual check. And it might be something worth $2,500 or even more. One sister got a radio station. You see what I'm saying? Um, so it's a centrifugal force, although it says $125,000. Uh, twenty five hundred. Two minutes. <laughs> uh, twenty five hundred dollars. Excuse me. Although it says twenty five hundred, it's a centrifugal force, which means it goes far beyond that once the prosperity starts coming in, because it's an angelic aspect of that. So it's a magical eight to put in your wallet, so your money can return. And the purple healing disc of Tachyon energy that heals everything, enhances your dreams, opens the pineal gland, and several things. So that's the angelic stimulus package. Um. We also have, for those people who have seen my lectures over the years, um, we, well, although you can receive the full library of lectures from me, but also, um, which is over 300 lectures, 
Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to try to get some of that earlier stuff and try to get some of that earlier stuff on um, um, on the YouTube. So I guess well, I'll be sending some stuff to Brother Rich so he can somehow log that in. But not only can you get the DVDs, but what you can do is those pictures that you have been seeing on the DVDs um, that I've been selling for years, um, for the last five or six years, those particular pictures, we have a package deal where you get about maybe 27 to 30 pictures, which is equivalent of $100 worth of pictures for $50. So it might, because those pictures are $5 in the lectures, so about 27 to 30, a little over 100 maybe $150 worth of pictures you will get for $50. We, we, yeah, uh, we, you will get for $50. And last but not least, you get these readings. Now, these readings are different than other readings. It doesn't they have anything to do with your personal life. I wouldn't be interested in even giving you some stuff on whether your woman going to come back to you or, you know what I'm saying, or what have you. Uh, but uh, where you're going to get your bunion cut off or whatever type thing on your personal life. These readings tell you what God and goddesses you are. And it gives you the pantheon of God. It tells you what God you are in Yoruba, Voodoo, ancient Egypt, Palo, um, Samaria, um, Asia, East India, and so on. So we have those particular readings in there. We have those for 75. So if you're interested in any of these things, especially the angelic stimulus package, you can call 678-358-358. 1055. Once again, 678 358 1055. Now, before we get into that, I want to say a few, give you a little, a, a little bit of announcements and things, or different things uh, that we need to look out of. Before we go to the mythological world, we need to go on the mundane world. Um, and ask yourself this as far as tilapia fish, because I've been asking this question. And most people, and I've been asking this question to people in their 70s, uh, people in their 30s, their 40s, their 60s, and asking them, do they remember what a tilapia fish was um, before the 2000s? Most people never heard of this thing until recently. And I heard a guy that, 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 that heard about it in the food service in the, in the early 90s, but it really, no one really heard about it. But now this tilapia fish is everywhere. Well, we got some bit of information um, that they started taking these genes, human genes, and first it's, it's, it's the same genetically modified foods. So they started taking these human genes and taking these human genes and putting them in animals. First they did the cow, they did the pig, they did several animals, and they didn't take, they had a pig. They put some human, they, he was born from human genes, and the pig was like two years old. The pig looked like it was 95 years old. It couldn't even stand. Had arthritis, and they had to prop it up against the wall. So this genetically modified uh, 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 animal cloning, when it came to human genes, it didn't take into the animal kingdom uh, or the mammals or what have you, but it did take in fish. It did take in fish. And the people, the genetically modified people, was saying we were mostly interested in tilapia and carp. Well, we don't know what carp, so the carp didn't make it to the, in our communities, but the tilapia did. And they said they needed to feed Africa and Asia. And now if you look, tilapia is everywhere. In the 90s on back, the cheaper fish was whiting. And whiting was introduced into the United States by the Nation of Islam. Elijah Muhammad had a deal with a, with a, 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 a Japanese a uh, fella that back in the 60s, and they started bringing the whiting over because uh, the West didn't really deal with whiting until the Nation of Islam started doing it. Then it became popular after that, so we can trace the whiting back. But this tilapia, not only is it genetically modified, it is everywhere. Not only is it genetically modified, you never see this thing with the head on it. You just see all this. You can get a bag of tilapia. You can get 20 damn uh, uh, fillets of tilapia, tilapia, for almost $7. It's yeah. everywhere. And even expensive restaurants is even, um, uh, even selling it. And this tilapia, come to find out, it is made up of 100 different species of a tilapia fish all into this one genetically modified fish. And this stuff is everywhere. And it 
-hmm. It doesn't live that long. Mm -hmm. So they have to really get this thing to the grocery and really pump this stuff because it only lives a certain amount of time. And they showed the original fish it came from, and it, the, the genetically modified is almost three times bigger than that. So the point I'm trying to make here is, um, Dr. Quake Andow said that it went to Africa back in 90, back in 2002, and they had the helicopters dropping this genetically modified food out of the helicopters, and the Africans was picking up rocks, throwing at the helicopters as to say that um, they could sense that this stuff was poison. So the point about it is this tilapia is this. If it doesn't live that long because it's got these human genes in it, and it doesn't live as long for some reason, if you eat it and it becomes a part of your nervous system, it means that in actuality that same genetic aspect of it, or whatever type of species, because it's a, a combination of, of several other fish, that same genetic aspect, you don't live long. So we're just telling people to check that out as far as this tilapia fish, you see. Uh, you see what I'm saying? It's, and, it just, and it just came out of nowhere, and it is everywhere. And, and, it, is, and it is everywhere. Now, the brother Quaku, who said that he remembered the original one from the 90s, he said this one doesn't even taste like it. So we're still dealing with these genetically modified foods. But I just wanted to just put that out there. Another thing I want to call attention to is that Barack Obama just passed the hate crime bill. And... It's not that he passed it with us in mind. The way they do it is they put the skinhead in the Ku Klux Klan as the origin of the bill. You see what I'm saying? And they'll pass this stuff for the skinhead in the Ku Klux Klan. But what this bill does, this bill does, because it's a hate crime bill, now all of a sudden everybody is up under that. So you see the people, you know, like the, you know, uh, people standing up talking junk about white folks and hating on this and hating on that out in public. You see what I'm saying? Out there in the streets, they are now getting ready to go to jail. You see what I'm saying? Uh, they did, like I did, like last, last January, well, the first part of the year, they did an entire special on the Black Panther Party. And they was, they was, they was dealing with all this type, the new Black Panther Party. And they were dealing with all this so-called hate. They did it along with the skinheads the same time they did it. And this thing was passed recently around the same time that this execution of John Muhammad, who said that he, to his grave, that he uh, was innocent. You see, and the John Muhammad was executed the night after the memorial of the massacre at Fort Hood, where the guy came and shot up Fort Hood, Texas. And then, uh, then a... Um, Barack Obama did the memorial that day and then executed John Muhammad that night. And then Veterans Day was the next day. So unless you go to these, these rituals they do, and right, on the, on, on, right in the middle of that, this, this hate crime has passed. And they're lumping all of that with terroristic activity. So just be careful, you know what I'm Be careful on what you say. You see what I'm saying on this particular time because you're going to get lumped right back in there. So all these black groups, you see what I'm saying, that, that, that does the shit talk, you see what I'm saying, you subject to hate crimes and all. So I just wanted to put that out there. If anybody wanted to comment on that, now is the time um, of anything. Yeah, um, just, just to touch back on that whole food thing, it just seems yeah. like... We can't eat anything now, Bobby. It's like it, every, exactly. They don't mess with everything. It's like, everything. It, it, exactly. It's exactly. Like what, 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 what I like you said at the last lecture when you uh, came to New York, you was talking about praying over the food. And I know when we when we become conscious, we want to throw right. praying out the window. Exactly. You, you talked about the importance of why our ancestors had to do it in slavery. Could you touch on that so people won't think that? Well, it was interesting religion. come to find out that. These things that was handed down, you got to realize even Christianity, Judy, the Judeo-Christian Islam paradigm is nothing but a consortium of ancient rituals that came out of the ancient African world. So therefore, and they retain some of these particular rituals. So we were thinking that, um, we were thinking that, and most people ended up thinking, we were raised that when you, you, when you, when you say grace, you're thanking the Lord for the food. 
But the grace wasn't originally that. The grace was in actuality praying over that food so that that food would not harm you. It's no different than what the, what, 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 when they say kosher meats and kosher food from the Jews. All of this is the rabbi just pray over it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. this is the same aspect of those types of things, what saying the grace is all about. Another thing is you shouldn't eat food from people who are real hostile and nasty. You see what I'm saying? You know, you get a, you know, um, you know, like, like there's one sister like, man, they got this black woman cook these burgers down here, and they're the best burgers in the world, but she curse everybody out. And they just be laughing. I'm like, no, nah, man, you don't need to be eating that. You see what I mean? You don't need to be eating that, because when they ask all cultures, well, what is it why this food tastes so good? Whether they ask the Mexicans, they ask the Africans, they ask everybody, they say, we cook they this food love. with love. love and it. that's why when we was eating all that pork and everything in slavery and all that stuff, that food was cooked by love. You see what I'm saying? Cooked with love. You see what I'm saying? And that's one of the things. Even if you go to a restaurant and the person might not know you, but they love the craft of cooking that food. So their love went into it just for the love of making the food. It was a form of cooking with love. And you can tell when someone makes something, when the food is off the chain, it tastes that good. So one of the things that needs to be done is, um, yes, praying over the food is a part of that. It, 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 it is a part of that. You see what I'm saying? You know, another thing you can do is get a pendulum, and you could ask yes or no whether this food is the way it is. You see them, uh, whether it's good or, or not. And pretty much you just you get you just get a vibe off of it, but especially if a person has a neck any negativity of a person cooking your food in a restaurant, you need to get up and walk out or don't even order from there, and stuff like that because that goes into the food. So that's just very interesting. Um, that's very interesting. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, which leads me to this. Um, there's a. There's a book coming out on February 2nd. This book is called The Immortal Cells of Henrietta Lacks, L-A-C-K-S. The Immortal Cells of Henrietta Lacks. Henrietta Lacks is a black woman that they took cells from her in 1951, right before she died in 1951. And they used these cells for everything that they have had a cure. Now, we're not talking about the pharmaceutical industry to give you all this stuff to cure the symptoms, but not the pain. But we're talking about the actual breakthroughs and cures. They have used this woman's cells as a part of every breakthrough and cures since they took these cells from her in 1951. They even used these cells to go into space, to, 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 to go into space um, with, because I have remembered, I think it was, I think it was, uh, who told me this? I think it was, um, somebody told me, I think it was Dr. Africa, Leola Africa that told me, it was at a melanin conference back in 1994, and he said that, um, you know, they have to spray those ships with melanin, those space shuttles. They have to spray, spray those space shuttles with melanin before they go up, based on that Van Allen belt, uh, uh, you see what I'm saying, uh, that radiation and that whole... Uh, yeah, and stuff like that. They had to spray it with, with melanin. Well, come to find out, they had to spray this woman's, they spray this woman's, the cells. And they grow these cells in a lab. They've been growing these cells since 1951, and they use them. They use them for polio. They use them for every breakthrough in a vaccine and a cure. Now, the key here is, um, the book is coming out, The Immortal Cells of Henrietta Lacks, on February the 2nd, and they're going to come out with it. The mystery here is, is, they'll, her cells was no different than any other black woman. You see what I'm saying? There was immortal cells, and yes, we have it. It wasn't no different than any other black woman. It's just that they are the cells that they documented. You see what I'm saying? So she gets to go into history. But what it is saying here is, is and that's one of the keys we need to reiterate, because the person was giving it to me, gave it this information, was thinking that her cells were just unique. But what she didn't realize is her cells wasn't no unique than any other black woman. It's just that they took her cells, you see what I'm saying, they was able to isolate her cells in 1951 after the technology got to the level that they could successfully do it. 
but it could have been any black woman's cells, but this stuff is, 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 is a molecule to fortify and to heal and to make right on any breakthroughs they have had in history. So uh, moving right along, going into just the other information, uh, of, of the other information on just our greatness, um, our greatness. Um, so uh, you, you have any questions on that before we, uh, yeah, we yeah, Real yeah, I want to say the call, the call the call in number um six four six seven two seven two zero three nine. Uh we're with uh guest um guest speaker tonight, Bobby Hemmett, the name of the show, Power Mythology. Uh go ahead, you was about to say something, Bobby? Yeah, well there's a movie that's out. I think it's it might be on pay per view or on demand. If you got Comcast, we there's several things. They got different well, time warning in some place, Comcast and another place. Um, they have Comcast down here, Dish Network, and uh, as far as the satellite goes, they have Comcast Cable, Dish Network Satellite, and Direct TV Satellite. Well, I have Dish Network, and there's one. There's a movie. You might have to go out to the video place and get it. There's a movie out called um, Live Evil. Live Evil, and it is a movie based on um, the vampires are dying off. You know, there's several vampire movies, and these vampire movies, they're, they're dying off. Um, first of all, the movie came out called Universal Remote, and in there they have Charlie Murphy, and they have several skits. They might have these ten-minute, uh, five-minute skits throughout the whole movie, and he's playing one skit in the movie where he's playing a vampire, and he's saying, that the va he's saying it's ridiculous around here because the vampires can't go out and eat nobody no more because of the toxins in the humans' bodies. <laughs> and so, and he was going. He was, you know, he was he was complaining about it. Well, that was in a movie, Universal Remote. It came out in 07 or 08. But they have another movie that came out in 09, a complete movie called Live Evil. And in this particular movie, the reason why the vampires are dying off is because the humans' bodies have become so toxic until whenever they eat them, it kills them. So that it first starts off with a woman. Um, coming in, a vampire coming into this bar, and she bit everybody in the bar and killed everybody in the bar, and then started throwing up the blood. <laughs> and the other vampire had to come in and say, I told you, you can't be eating no humans. And had to give her his blood for her to survive. So one of the things of this thing, in order for them to survive, they have to drink their own blood. You see what I'm saying? Until they can find humans without toxins. You see, now, hold on to that because... When we go into this mythology, I'm going to explain some mythology tonight, and we're going to bring this thing home to some stuff that's happening right now, which is, which is probably one of the keys to the apocalypse, if they, it, 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 for the lack of a better word, or the keys to the book of the dead, or the book of hereafter, or the book of coming forth by day. And so uh, hold on to that. Um, because I'm going to show you some things that's actually happening, and we're going to explain this stuff through mythology. Let me give you another form of mythology. Um, another form of mythology. Now, um, Martin Luther King is none other in the saint world. So you got in the world of Santeria, the Caribbean, they're broken down into the Yoruba deities, and also the saints. And we know that the Yoruba deities, they had to hide a lot of those deities under the saints, under the Catholic Church. So these books on the saints, there's a book on saints by Baba Raul Canizares that breaks down and shows you whatever saint is whatever Yoruba god or whatever Egyptian god. Um, I, I got it in the library, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's two small books under about a thousand or two, three thousand maybe 5,000 bigger books, so, uh, so it's just a, it's a book on saints. But anyway, St. Martin, we had done some research that St. Martin is Martin Luther King. Is Martin Luther King. But St. Martin is also Elegba. Now follow me on this. This is still dealing with the myth. There was a woman that came, she has a tape out, it's a professor. She came to New York in the 1990s, and she did a whole thing on the history of Haiti, which she calls Aiti. 
Aichi is the real name. And she did a history on Aichi of Haiti, and she goes into the Haitian Revolution, and she talks about Toussaint L'Overture and Desaline. Now, Toussaint is the great generalist that fought in the War of Independence and defeated the French, along with Desaline. Oh, along with Desaline. Now, Toussaint later on, because he had this royal breeding of these high-end white folks, he never could get it out of his head that these people don't respect him as a human at that particular time. You see what I'm saying? So he thought that he could negotiate. So he went to, after the revolution, he went over to France to talk to Napoleon, and they locked him up, and he died in prison in France. But Desaline begged him not to go, say, you don't know who you fooling with. You see what I'm saying? Now, the key here was, the key here was, the woman explained that Toussaint was a form of a leg bar. Now, leg bar, or uh, issue, it's, it's e leg bar, it's issue, and it's leg bar in Vodun. And she explained that uh, and that's St. Martin in the Saints aspect of that, and the Catholic thing with, the, with, with, with the, the people in the Caribbean and the people in Latin America put this thing together with. So she explained that, which we do know, Legba is a person, he's a Moses figure. He opens the gateway, he opens the doorway. And so he would be a form of an Anubis figure, a Tahuti figure. They open the doorway, but they don't go into the fruition or the final aspect of what journey or what endeavor. So though Moses never, which was a mythological character, never was a historical person, didn't go on into the promised land. It was supposed to be Joshua, which is Yeshua, Jesus, your Yeshua, you see what I'm saying, which is a form of Heru, would go into the promised land. This is a, this is a mythological thing more than it is a historical thing. So in, in so many words, these are dealing with principles. So a leg ride never goes into the actual promised land. Um, and as a result, Toussaint was a form of a leg ride. He didn't make it to see uh, the independence. He, he made it for the independence, but he never made it to see uh, Haiti become this particular country in the Western Hemisphere that's run by blacks. You see what I'm saying? Because he, because he went and they locked him up in France. Now... And he died there. But Desaline and others with him made it into the promised land. So it's almost as if she was explaining that he would have been a form of Legba, but Desaline and whoever would be a form of either Ogun, you see, or they call it Ogu Shango, but basically Ogun, or Ogu in, um, in Voodoo, but, but still it's Ogun, who would actually go into the promised land. So she was explaining how these energies or these mythologies actually coincide with actual humans doing certain things. So a lot of times, a very good example, you have to line this stuff up with the mythology or with these particular deities, which are formulas or attributes. Now let me give you another example. That, make, that, that leads us to Martin Luther King. Now, Martin Luther King, if he was the leg bar, because he's St. Martin, which is a leg bar, an issue, and he's Martin Luther King, um, he would be a form of leg bar. Now, what does Martin Luther King do? Martin Luther King, he went to the mountaintop. He didn't go over the mountaintop. You see what I'm saying? He didn't see the fruition of what black people would come into, uh, what, what black people would come into. Um, and some can say, my God, we glad he didn't see that. But if you understand the spiritual aspect, and understand the spiritual aspect other than the apparent, what this also means is he went to a, he, he was a great emancipator. He opened the gateways for us to go on. He opened the gateways for us to go on, but he didn't go into the promised land which is yet to be fulfilled. You see what I'm saying? But nevertheless, it's the same thing, which also coincides with the great opener of the way, Legba, 
opens the way and to let a certain amount of energy come through, which would be later on a messianic energy, which in so many words is talking about this generation right now that we're talking about. You see what I'm saying? With the Barack Obama's inauguration is the only thing we're dealing with with him now. With the inauguration being fulfilled. The inauguration was more important than the man Barack Obama himself. You see what I'm saying? The inauguration has to do with this Mayatian generation that the Hermetic text talked about that would reestablish Maya in the house of the living and the house of the dead. Now hold on to that because when we go deeper into this mythology, by the time we get to the end of this thing, this thing is going to come smack dab right into some things that's happening right now and also lining up with the book of coming forth by day the Bible, and several other things, but mainly the oldest book in the world, which we're concerned with. The book of coming forth by dead, uh, the Egyptian book of the dead, uh, Pari M. Heru, uh, light, um, which Heru means light. Um, so I, 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 I want to put that in, log that in when we talk about this particular mythology. I also, yeah, hello? Yeah, I was going to say we only got a, an hour and a half left. Unfortunately, we only got two hours on the show. Today. Okay, cool. Well, I'm getting now, ready to I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to come with that in a few minutes. Yeah, I want. I'm gonna come I'm, with it in a few minutes. Number one, that. we've also found to show you mythology and show you that this stuff is also current events. We've also found recently a a statue of Oshun, a West African deity, on the temple walls of Angkor Wat. And if anybody ever seen Africans in Asia, he calls this something else, the brother Eugene Adams, um, his take. And he talks about how we write the story for the future. Years ago, it's been written. Well, there's a picture of Oshun on the, on the temple walls and Urzuli, because both of those care mirrors. There's a goddess with a mirror on the temple walls in Angkor Wat, in, 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 in Vietnam, Cambodia. Now... Um, Cambodia. Now, this is another great thing because now we're getting ready to break something. There's also a picture of, it's, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a statue of Oshun and Ozuli. Oshun being from Nigeria, Ozuli being from the kingdom of Dahomey, Benin. But there's those two African goddesses, which is the African goddesses of love, the goddess Venus, and would also be a form of head, hair, root. I want to say this because this is lining this whole mythology thing up. Now, we got these pictures of Oshun at the temple walls. We also have the picture of the god Beth. Anybody know Beth is an Egyptian deity? We have found the god Beth in Vietnam or Cambodia. Do you know that the, and the name of that, and Vietnam is a later name, it was called the Camille Empire. What other part of the world was called Cam? Ancient Egypt. This is one of the great mysteries that is going on, and this might break one of the mysteries of the Vietnam War. Now, this is unbelievable, because it was also uh, um, Alim Bey that announced when he opened when he, uh, he opened for me one year, about two years ago, two, that, 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 that China, the first Chinese dynasty, was named after Shango. Well, it's interesting here, because even in the Dictionary of Ancient Deities, they got a Japanese deity. It's a goddess named Shango. You see what I'm saying? And Shango is a West African deity. Now, let me break this on you right quick, because this stuff is all coming together. We might have to do another show to do some more time, but check this out. Now, what we're finding out here, is there's a best there, and it was Graham Hancock, one of Graham Hancock's books, where he said that the name Anchor Wat means the God Horace lives. The God Horace lives. Anchor Wat. The God Horace lives. Yeah. And, and, and the anchor, the anchor was the Ankh, life. Hor. Heru, Horace. Now this, is, now, this is one of the great mysteries here, and this might blow your mind, that the word, the Camille Empire, was nothing but another place where the Egyptians dwelled. And why is it that we have pictures from France that they stole, that they took these things to that Gimme Museum, where we got Egyptian 
we got the a, ancient Camille, which would be later on modern Vietnam, with Egyptian dress on and dreadlocks. It's amazing. We have the pictures. But the, it, then it gets even more where black people that went to do part in Vietnam say we was out partying one day and we ended up on the street where all the people looked like niggas from Harlem. Looked like black people from Harlem right in Vietnam. And we, and we know of the mountain yards. The point I'm trying to make here is this was another region of ancient Egyptians and ancient Africans because they have Beth, they have Oshun, they even have the god Ganesha. Which breaks this down. Now check this out. The word Ganesha is another removal of obstacles. Anybody know what Ganesha is? That's the elephant deity with the big stomach that you see in India. Ganesha. G-A-N-E-S-H-A. -E Ganesha. He's the remover of obstacles, auspicious, the god of, of writing, the god of knowledge, and remover of obstacles, and a variation of things. Ganesha, believe it or not, is pronounced in Sanskrit, Ghana, Ishu. Ishu is the Legba, the remover of obstacles, oh. and the opener of the way. Ghana is the West African country. country yeah. Ghana means the beginning of all life in the universe. Ghana issue. Ask yourself this question. What was the first country in Africa to gain its independence? Ghana. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Under Kwame Nkrumah. You see, the day that, I, this, the day that Ganesha came and told me this, and I looked it up in Sanskrit, a brother named Kwame that hails from New York and Baltimore called me and Linda on my our birthday because her birthday was on the 20th. My birthday is Saturday on the 28th. And then right after that, uh, uh, the, the, uh, Ganesha came through. Ghana Ishu, and it means the Lord of the beginning, you see, in Sanskrit, of the, uh, of the Lord of creation. So the point is, is that it's so, but so we see the connection on what's, what's, what's going on. Now, so now, let me break this thing down with the mythology on what's actually going on here. Number one, number one, we had to write things in mythology because the simple fact, we was not, um, we were not only two things was happening. We was writing history that we could actually see in the future. But we would write these history, and guess what? These history would repeat itself on, 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 on periodically. And as a result, we had to have a, a, a mythology or a science, that because mythology is science. They show you that in a book called Hamlet's Mill. That's 1969. That book came out. You know, you know mythology and science. Um, Hamlet's Mill is the name of that book. Um, but what happened was, but what happened was, we would write that history, and that history would reoccur at periodic periodically at times. You could take certain history of certain people throughout history and they can line up with other humans that live later on. You got right, it's almost as eerie. This thing repeated itself. That was one aspect of mythology. Another thing of mythology was we had to explain things that go beyond the physical realm by this only being a series of events that's that's an illusion. We had to have something that would that that would that would uh, go beyond the physical that would supersede the physical realm, and that's the scientific aspect. And as a result, as a result, we had to create this particular mythology. So mythology is African science. You see, it's, it's African science. Now, uh, it's African science. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to give a few more things on this, and I'm going to go into and show you how this thing is all connected. Uh, is, is, is all connected. Number one... Number one, the mythology is where the gods come through and speak their language. Let me give you an example. There's a brother named Taurus down in um, Memphis. He's in, he's in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And recently, he tapped into the Huna gods. Now put this on your lips because this has something. The Huna gods. The Huna, the Huna gods are the Hawaiian gods. And he tapped into these particular deities, and he sent me all this particular information. He, made a, he even sent the shit to FedEx. 
so that I could get this particular information. And what I was trying to tell him was, in actuality, this was not just another part of study where you just took an interest in something. These were these deities that was actually coming through and were saying, hey, we needed to be listed amongst the deities that you have been talking about when you're talking about all this in the particular knowledge. Especially if I'm one of the people that give you all these particular deities, they wanted to come through to let it be known. So these Huna gods, are these, and Pele is one of them, um, is, is one of them, and these particular gods have, have come through. Now we're going to deal with this on another time, on, on, on another time where we can, um, where we can actually uh, uh, go into detail. But I'll give you the uh, 10 or 11 of these deities now. Io, Cain, Na, Wahini, Laka, uh, Lono, uh, Nik, uh, Ninaku, Hakai, Powa, Kapo, Kanalama, Pele, which is the one that the one that's the most famous, the, the volcano goddess, and Hanau, a uh, Hanua, is the last one, which is the is probably the Earth one. But anyway, these particular deities are coming through, and so we're going to have to contend with that. And it has something it might have something to do with also the uh, it's the 50th state, and this is the 50th year anniversary of the 50th state. 50 Gates of Understanding, Michael Jackson dies at 50, we went into all of that, and also Barack Obama was born in Hawaii. You see what I'm saying? So these are how these things are actually, are actually, actually lining up. Uh, I want to say a few things and then I'm going to go into this because I know time is at the essence. But I want to um, see, can I go into, uh, um, if I could go into something here, um, if, I could, if I can go into something here right quick. Oh, let me just go ahead and just break it on down, and we can we can meet with the uh, we can meet meet with the um, as far as uh, uh, we'll deal with question and answer. Um, first of all, I want to break this particular thing down. Uh, first of all, did anybody know about about a month ago you had some north west flight, uh, the northwest flight that went straight through. It was supposed to go. It was a, it was a flight. That was supposed to go to I, I think Minneapolis, and it overflew the airport and kept on going, and it ended up it was almost an hour and twenty minutes before they could actually catch them, and they yeah, uh, and, and, huh? Yeah, I heard of it. Yeah, and they and they had to remind them, and they had to take another jet to because the air traffic controllers couldn't get in touch with them, and they had to take another jet that was in the area to radio them another way. And then they came up with all kind of excuses, all kind of excuses, and they're still investigating this. What's really going on was <clears throat> they went to a porthole of time, um, and they thought that in all honesty it was just a few minutes, but, it had, but it, 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 the time had lapsed to an hour and 20 minutes. And, then, and see, the thing about it here is the, 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 the air traffic, the AAA, uh, whatever, whatever you call it, air traffic controllers, um, the, all the people in the airline industry, they know about this type of thing that happens because it happens constantly. But what's happening here is this one they weren't able to keep shut. But the key here is what had happened was is they went into another time dimension. It's also, you get that movie Stephen King's The Langoliers. Came out back in 1995, The Langolier. And it was another time dimension. It was almost like it was gone for a couple of days, but it was only like a few minutes. You see what I'm saying on Earth time, and that's what happened to these guys. So in so many words, there's these gateways that's actually hope opening up. Now, let me go into the order of the day and the great mystery. And then if you want, we can give out a few rituals. We got some money rituals, if you want, and some, um, uh, some love rituals, some other things that was real successful on the last blog talk. <clears throat> um, but anyway... Um, a good luck ritual. Everybody needs some good luck these days. Uh, and uh, so, anyway, let me give you uh, let me give you uh, uh, this particular information right quick. Um, get my red thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyway, that, um, while you get that, Bobby, let me tell them yeah. the call number real quick. Uh, six four yeah. six seven two seven two zero three nine. All right. Go ahead, Bobby. Yes. 
Now, um, okay, so uh, right now, let, we'll, we'll, let's, let's go into what's really going on here. Um, now, dealing with mythology, um, it's in the Book of the Dead, but there's a portion of the Book of the Dead, there's a portion of the Book of the Dead that's called the Book of Gates. And those papyruses are not necessarily included in the entire Book of the Dead, although you can get glimpses. <clears throat> the Book of the Gates was, was, was copied as it, uh, E. Wallace Burge copied these Book of the Gates, and it was called um, the Egyptian Heaven and Hell. You know? The Egyptian Heaven and Hell is, 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 is what these Book of Gates was. And it was a little small, small black and yellow book, um, a little small black and yellow book, for years. He put it out, I think, in 1907. And it took, he only put out one version of the book, one volume. It's three volumes that they didn't put the entire three volumes out until 1996. A lot of things happened that year. The Olympics came to Atlanta. They blew Etran out of the sky. I think TWA fell out of the sky, but also Tupac died in the fall Mm -hmm. of 1996. Now, listen to this. Now, I'll show you some mythology. They put out a movie called Strange World in the fall of 1995, killing a famous rapper, killing a famous rapper in the movie one year before Tupac died. They put out the movie Strange World, and a famous rapper played by Christopher Plummer in the movie gets killed. <clears throat> He gets killed by cops. So, you know, and it's ironically to this day, um, nobody's able to catch these particular people. You see what I'm saying? Nobody's able to catch these people. But the point I'm trying to make here was that same year they put out the three volumes of Egyptian in Heaven and Hell by E. Wallace Budge, the famous Egyptologist, um, the famous Egyptologist from the 1800s and in, in, in the early 20th century. And so they put out the three volumes, and now that's probably out of print. But in that Egyptian heaven and hell, there's something that's happening, and let me go into what this is. In that Egyptian heaven and hell, there is a scene of Osiris sitting on the throne. Osiris could also mean the Osirian people a lineage of a people that's coming out of dormancy and coming down from the physical fall of the physical person on earth. So these things, the Horus lineage, the Osirian lineage, these things are talking about a bloodline, a genetic bloodline. And they said when we went through the Book of the Gates or the Book of the Dead or the underworld is when we went through the Middle Passage from Africans to universal deities. You see what I'm saying? Which, with, with multiple bloodlines in us and multiple African bloodlines. That's a whole other lecture. But the key here is, in those Book of the, Day, a book, book of the Gates, when we get to the Osirian judgment scene, they're talking about something in the future. So the mythology is not talking about the past. It's talking about something that's going to go on in a future date. And that future date is now, because it all happens within the inauguration. When the inauguration comes from the house of the living and the house of the dead. Now, we've had this inauguration, which is called the return of the Pharaoh, um, January of such and such, when we had the inauguration. Now, this is very key that you understand this. When that inauguration came... It was the inauguration from the house of the living and the house of the dead. The house of the dead is the ancestors. And this is very important. This is very important. You can take this blog talk and run it over and over until you understand what's going on, because this is magnificent. In the book of the gates, in the panels of the judgment scene of Osiris, and I'll show these. Um, I'm doing, doing something on the 19th in Baltimore in um, uh, December, and I will show these, put it, Enter it into the actual lecture. There's these pictures of the particular person when the person, our ancestor, when the souls are getting ready to rise up to a spiritual level. That's the souls of our ancestors, and that is the souls in our human bodies. What has to happen is there's a monkey, and the monkey also could represent Hanuman, but it also can represent melanin. Now, stay with me on this. It's very important. There's this monkey 
that stands there with a big old bat in the judgment scene and what he has to do in order for the ancestors to rise to another level, they have to beat the negative karma from past lives, the negative issues, and all the lower stuff of the ego, the lower stuff that we have accumulated in this cycle of reincarnation. They have to beat all that out and they have to chase it into the pigs. They have to chase it into the swine. And that's on the judgment scene. It's also in the book of Acts in the Bible they talk about it. But not only that, the Twa people to this day, the physical Twa people, you, known as the pygmies to some people, the derogatory term, but the Twa people in Africa to this day, they have a person going crazy. They keep pigs around so that they can chase the, 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 the insanity into the pigs. And as soon as they chase the insanity with this ritual into the pigs, the pigs go crazy. Well, in the judgment scene, and in the book of Acts in, in the Bible, I think it is, but in the judgment scene where it originally comes from, they have to chase all the negative karma into the swine. Wow. And it's a monkey that did it. Now, this is the interesting part because Barack Obama went to Trinidad, which is part East Indian, part African. And they, so they, 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 the mythology of Hanuman, the monkey king that's all over Europe, is in Trinidad. They got a 20-foot statue, a uh, 50-foot statue of, of, of Hanuman. Now, uh, uh, Barack Obama has a Hanuman tattooed on him. He also has a charm bracelet of Hanuman because he lived in Indonesia, and the monkey king is throughout of India, started in India and throughout Asia. They worship the monkey, monkey king, played by Jet Li in the Forbidden Kingdom. Now, in another NBC movie called The Monkey King, but anyway, that's Hanuman. So when he went there, he went to, to Trinidad last year, there's that big statue of Hanuman. He was fortified. Then he went to Mexico. And right after he left Mexico, the curator of the museum that greeted him with this conference died of the swine flu. And the first infestation of the swine flu H1N1 virus, which they later named it to get you off of it, occurred in, occurred in Mexico. You see, it occur, occurred in Mexico, or it might have broke out before that, and they was trying to kill Barack Obama. But nevertheless, what happened is this. Then this stuff went all into America. We talked about Rumsfeld and them um, was giving the people the Tamiflu, and the Tamiflu is owned by, is, 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 is invested with Rumsfeld and the whole nine yards. They're even saying that this new vaccine is. But let's get off the physical and try to understand what's going on here. For the mere fact that they have this virus that started, and it started from the swines, what they're trying to tell you is that our ancestors in the spirit world and our souls right now are casting off all of the dreads and the negative ego and the negative karma, and it went into the pigs. Then it went airborne. And when it went airborne, you see what I'm saying? Once it went airborne, it didn't even have to go into the swine anymore, although they announced in October that they got infected swine or H1N1 virus or the swine flu. They got infected pigs in America. They only say it once. So, number one, you shouldn't be fucking with no pigs. You should get off the swine. That's the first thing. Number two, number two, uh, the swine... It's not only sacred to uh, the black boy, it's sacred to the god Set in, 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 in Egypt. It's also sacred to the Gede. The Gede in Voodoo and the Gede is the, Gede is the ancestors, it's the dead. But the, but the head of the Gede is Baron Sambi. Remember he showed up? Remember Baron Sambi showed up um, uh, uh, in 08? And we've been talking about Baron Somni, the Lord, Baron Somni and the goddess Brigitte, and they both showed up in 08. This thing all comes together. Because when he shows up and all this stuff starts happening, he was the head of the gay day. He and the goddess Bridget. Now, the gay day is second to the swine, so this is also connected to the ancestors rising up, their energies, the negative energies being cast into the swine. Now it's going airborne, and this is mythology of the Book of the Dead that said that this would happen. So in so many words, 
This swine flu thing that we're having now is a part of the rise. It's a part of our rise, and it's going airborne. You see what I'm saying? It, it, it's part, as now, Baron Zombie used to be Balaluaye in Africa. You see, Baron Zombie is a Haitian New Orleans concoction. But before he was um, um, a Haitian New Orleans in Europe, he was Babaluaye. And Babaluaye, as you know, Desi Arnaz Jr., the club Babalu. But Babaluaye is also the God that sets over disease and immunization. So all this stuff is coming together based on the mythology. And the mythology is a vast scientific way to explain what's happening. But this is big business as of now based on this H1N1. And so they were, they were inoculating people because they knew they couldn't get them off the swine. You see what I'm saying? They never knew they couldn't get them off the swine. So they were inoculating people and all because they knew that it's also the cabalistic. The cabalistic, you got the front side of the tree and you got the back side of the tree called the calypso. They said the back side of the tree will rule in the future because that's nothing but the fallen ancestors. Hey, the fallen up. ancestors. But the Hold back on. side of the tree, the calypso, sets over disease. Brother Bobby, um, yes. Joel, Joel had mentioned to me last week, and somebody just brought it up in the chat room on the Internet, yes. um, is it about Baron Zombie. Isn't he in the new movie, Joel? What you was telling me about the new oh, yes. Disney movie? Oh, yes. Disney. Walt yeah. Disney, the Fall Princess. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yes, yeah. Baron Zombie is in there. Walt Disney never did any... They, 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 they never put black characters in the cartoons other than the zippy the doodah thing. But, you know, they had Mulan in the 90s. They had, uh, which is Asian, they had, um, the, the, they had the Arabic thing. What's the guy's name? Um, I can't think of the, um, it'll come to me in a minute. They had Mulan. They had Pocahontas. They, you know, they covered all races. Hmm? Aladdin was Arabic. And when they got to Africa, they gave us the animals, the Lion King, which is the Osirian story. But for the first time, they have done an all-black feature, animated feature, Disney. But... In the fall of the year, they pick a new queen to ride around Disney waving, and they pick this beautiful, dark-skinned black girl this year. And not only is she a human queen in, in Disney, but she's also featured in the cartoon, on the uh, animated version. Excuse me, Bobby, don't forget the video game on GoldenEye 007 from, I believe, that Nintendo console. There they got James Bond fighting Baron Zombie. Yes, it, yeah, because the, 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 the Baron Zombie in the 1972 version of Live and Let Die, the guy Godfrey Holder um, played Baron Zombie, uh, uh, played, played, played Baron Zombie in Live and Let Die, you know, um, sure did. But they got the Disney thing coming out, and none of this stuff is by mistake. None of this stuff, none of this stuff is, is by mistake. It all coincides with, with uh, the stuff that's going on. Bobby, now that you say that all coinciding, since we stuck on um, Baron Somni topic, Lady Gaga, did you see how she did a combination of Baron Somni and Mama Bridget at the awards? The MTV oh, yeah, awards? yeah. And, and you got to hear your boy. He's been doing Baron Somni for the longest. Um, what's the guy with the top hat? Flavor Flav. No, nah, not Flavor Flav. Flavor Flav started it off. If you ever get that article from the... Uh, T-Pain, you're talking about. Huh? T-Pain. Yeah, yeah. Right, but if you ever get that, what's the Emerge article they had on Flavor Flav? If you ever get that article, he's, when he, you know, he's dealing with that, because even when he was dealing with Bridget Nielsen in his, um, in, uh, in, in that um, Strange World episode that started the Flavor of Love, he would call her Gaita, a Gita, which is the Gay Day, and Bridget, which is his wife, the Baron found his wife. So yes, all this stuff comes together. You know, all this stuff comes together. You see what I'm saying? I want to uh, ask you real quick, Brother Bobby, um, on the Internet lately, a lot of the uh, white researchers, um, Texas Mars and um, yeah. a couple of other ones, Gary Colin, they've been saying and they come, they, they've been saying a lot, sending out emails that um, the ancient Egyptian pharaoh Akhenaten is uh, our modern-day president, Barack Obama, commander-in-chief. And they go into all these references in the Bible about um, Egypt and just a lot of things. I want to know what you think about them saying that he's the reincarnation of um, Akhenaten. Um, I've heard certain things to that effect, too. Um, to that effect, too. And based on the psychic lines I've gotten, 
uh, um, I've gotten a bit of that too. Um, I, I've gotten a bit of that too, you know, and, and stuff. You know, you have many incarnations, so um, it could, you know, I, I don't put nothing past anything. Um, you see what I'm saying? Um, uh, 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 I don't put nothing past anything. You see, but I, yeah, I've heard of that, and I've been aware of it. I even showed the pictures that they did with the Queen T and the Akhenaten in um, uh, on the internet. But um, uh, what I got on some psychic lines that it was true. Uh, I have to further research it, but yes, that, that's been going to that effect. Um, it's been going to that effect, you know. Um, so it's very interesting. Okay, all right. Uh, let's uh, let's let's get into. We got 58 minutes left. This right. Is, the powerful, powerful show. Um, I want to go into. Should we go into some questions? You want to go into a couple of questions? Yeah, we can now? go into a little of that. Yeah. Okay. Let, let's. Uh, let's uh, you want a, me? To, let me. You want me to go out a ritual, or we can go into question and answer first? Well, give out the ritual, and then we're going to question and answer. Okay. Yes, because people. This. This is very. People been calling and saying, you know, that they have. They've had a. Uh, <clears throat> they've had a, a. A real good. Uh, real good uh, response to the rituals. So what I want to do at first, I want to look up. Um, this particular day, like I told the people again, uh, if you can go on the internet and get, you might get them for two or three dollars. It's called Di It's called the Goddess Book of Days by Diane Stein. S T E I N. Diane Stein's book, The Goddess Book of Days, which is a, uh, I got it in Washington D.C. back in '05, and it was out of print then. It was ten years old then, but you can put you can get them. You can get them hardback for six dollars. So I want people to go on the internet and look up the Goddess Book of Days. Um, 100, uh, 366 days of engaging engagement calendar by Diane Stein. Let's look up um, the day is what the 25th. Yeah, what is the day? Yeah. Okay, the day is a day of Oya. Um, in, in uh, Oya, it's also a day of Mayat and Bridget, which is the wife of Baron Sandy. Um, uh, which is the wife of Baron Sandy. But we want to focus on Oya. So. Um, um, I don't have a ritual to her right now, but what I what I do have is um, what I do have is a lot of times you make the ritual just by reading who she is. As you know, Arya was played by Holly Berry in the X Men series as Storm, as Storm, and even in the cartoon, they even showed them go to Africa, and that's when they found Storm in Nigeria, um, in in Nigeria. So um, the goddess Storm in the X-Men is none other than Oya. Um, I want to say so, so today is her day, so we want to um, want to celebrate her just by reading to you for, the, for those people who are not privy to the Yoruba of <clears throat> Oya, who she is. She's the goddess. She's the goddess of storms, um, 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 storms, and a whole lot of other things. But I want to um, just reiterate. I want to read this to you. Oya is the female Orisha and is the patron of fire in the sky or lightning that does not touch the earth. She is the gatekeeper in ceremony, uh, of se to ceremony, and Shango's partner in battle. Shango, as you know, um, um, Shango is the god of lightning, and Barak means the god of lightning. And the lady of the marketplace, she all, some also see her in actions of tornadoes, um, uh, you know, of, of the tornado. This is Shango's third wife and the favorite even over Oshun. So I just want to put that down as we uh, put that down. And what I want to do right now is I want to give a few things out. This time we're going to be dealing with, um, we're going to be dealing with uh, um, oils. And so we, we did some other uh, rituals this time. Now we're going to deal with some oils. So you want to make a good luck oil. And I, th I know we need good luck. So you want to get one tablespoon of dried wormwood, three tablespoons of ground nutmeg, one half, um, I'm sorry, one tablespoon of dried wormwood, three teaspoons of, of ground nutmeg, one half teaspoon of powdered mandrake root. So you're going to have to go to for cat botanicals to get this, some of the people, and 13 drops of pine oil and one half cup of olive oil. You want to place all ingredients in a clear glass jar and gently swirl into a clockwise direction. Seal the jar tightly and allow it to sit 
for 13 nights in a cool, dark place. Strain the oil through a cheese cloth and use it to anoint candles for wish-making, jinx-breaking, and some of y'all got some jinxes on y'all, and spells to attract good luck, money, and success. So go back and, and download that when you get a chance. I just gave it to you. The next one we're going to give you, is, if you need some more powerful stuff to help you, is called Hoodoo Oil. Now, Hoodoo, you, know, you got Voodoo in Europe, or you got Hoodoo, Hoodoo that's, that comes through South Carolina, North Carolina, on into New Orleans, uh, and, and into Louisiana. So you want to, this is a Hoodoo Oil. One half cup of sunflower oil. Two tablespoons of honey, three dried pumpkin seeds, six drops of honeysuckle oil, three drops of rose oil, and three drops of patchouli oil. Patchouli oil. Anybody know P-A-T-C-H-O-U-L-I, patchouli oil. When the moon is full, crush the pumpkin seeds using a... Uh, using a, a, a mortar or paste. Then mix all ingredients together by the light of the uh, by the night of by the light of a new white candle. Using a sterilized silver pen, prick your thumb and add three drops of your blood to the mixture. Spit twice into the mixture and stir twice. Stir in. Store in any, uh, uh, what's this word, airtight container until you are ready to use it. So hoodoo oil to, is to anoint candles for spell casting, divination, spirit communication, and invocation of the voodoo laws. The voodoo laws are none other than the, uh, none other than the, the, than the gods, Legba, Urzuli, what have you. Okay the, okay, the next one is a spirit oil. The spirit oil is one teaspoon of, of powdered oris, O-R-I-S, and um, uh, oris root, um, and one tablespoon of dried Solomon seal, one tablespoon of dried crushed rosemary, one small pinch of powdered jade or turquoise, um, and one drop of sandalwood oil, no, excuse me, three drops of sandalwood oil, three drops of mint oil, and one half cup of safflower oil, S-A-F-F-L-O-W-E-R oil. Um, mix the ingredients together and store in a tightly capped glass jar for at least three weeks in a cool, dark place. Strain through a cheesecloth and anoint uh, candles for exorcisms, seances, um, counterspell, that means to get something off of you, purification rituals, protection against evil influences, influences and spells to increase clairvoyant powers clairvoyant powers so those are the those are the um particular rituals we're going to give out we're going to give out one other money ritual right quick and that is a money ritual coming from the hoodoo tradition it's a lamp an oil lamp to saint anthony for money take a small white bowl and put inside it strips of paper with the name of each person living in the house who works. That means the people who got to have a job. Don't put nobody who is unemployed on these strips of paper. Add to this some, and this word is um, chamomile, parsley, and cinnamon. Fill the bowl with vegetable oils and add a floating wick. That means a long wick. Light the wick and let burn for three days. Prepare the lamp every Tuesday for 13 Tuesdays while saying, while saying the Novena Prayer 
to St. Anthony. So you're going to have to look up a prayer for St. Anthony and do this. If you didn't get what this was, download it again and just go back and see, um, go back and get what I say. So at this particular time, those are the rituals we're going to deal with right now. Um, right now, and also for the flu and for wellness, you want to burn some eucalyptus oil. You want to burn some eucalyptus oil. So you want to get those little things that got the little charcoal and got a little glass and you burn oils in it. Burn some eucalyptus oil for, for, for this flu and, um, and uh, for this flu as well as any kind of wellness. That's what's happening at this particular time. So let's go to the, the questions. Okay, okay. Um, <coughs> go to the caller from a 773 area code, 773-224. How you doing, Paula? Hello? Yes, I can't hear you. Could you speak up, please? You know what? I'm just listening, brother. Okay, okay. brother. Thanks for listening. All right. Okay, let's go to another caller. Yeah, from, okay. Uh, well, and not the charcoal. What you do is you get the little tea candles. It's a little set with a tea candle and a glass. And you can burn that eucalyptus oil with the tea candle and the glass. They got those lamps. They got them everywhere. <clears throat> okay. Let's uh, go and to also pine needle oil. Pine needle oil. That's another one. Okay. All right. Caller from a 323 area code, 323-828. Uh, caller, are you there? Yes, 323-828. Caller, are you there? I guess they're just listening as well. Uh, let's go to the next caller from a... Let me see, where is this? Um, 804, area code. Cole, are you there? Peace. Peace, brother. Do you have a question? I'm just um, joining Bobby Emmett right now. I just want to know, um, there's a lot of movies coming out. There was a um, movie I seen on the Internet called um, The Source Was a Princess. And then there was another movie coming out um, with Nicolas Cage. I think it's called Something, Something with the Witch. And it's like... Two movies with Nicolas Cage. I want to know if Bobby Hammond want to speak on all the well, ones. Well, Nicolas Cage got is, is definitely Cage. into the occult. Right. Nicolas Cage is definitely into the occult. He produced. Uh, he, he produced the rate. He produced the TV show for the Sci-Fi Channel um, about a couple of years ago, and it was um, it was called a oh, man. It was called Something Files. Um, the Dresden Files, and it was all on the metaphysical thing. And when you look into his movie. Uh, the movie where he's playing the Ghost Rider. And you'll look there and you'll see him sitting down by some books. And he has some of Israel Regarded books um, on the middle pillar, the Tree of Life, um, and also uh, um, Israel Regarded books um, on um, Kabbalah and stuff. So he is definitely into the occult. Big time, um, Nicolas Cage. You see what I'm saying? That's why he took the knowing picture. And he's doing a lot more of those things. And like I said, he did the Dresden Files. Y'all need to go pick that up. They still sell those. It only was allowed to come on one year on the Sci-Fi Channel, but they still sell those Dresden Files. Um, in, in, um, you can get them in, at Walmart and different places. And it's, it's a series, but he's into the occult, yes. And there's a lot of these movies that's, that's still continuing. And, all, you know, and they told us back in 95, the spirit world say that they inspire these writers in Hollywood to make some of those particular movies so that it could teach us. You see what I'm saying? And that's what the Spirit told us. You know, because I remember one time there was nothing. And then right after 1994, they started with Stargate, and it never stopped. It, 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 ne it never stopped. Now, Serena Williams was on Tabitha Smiley, and this sister was saying that she wants to play an action figure you know, in a movie, because she's athletic. And I said, man, she would make a good female blade. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, a uh, good female blade. Just don't cut your hair into no damn box fade, but, you know, keep your hair, but, you know, she'd right. make a good uh, female blade and stuff. It was very interesting. Right. Give me some questions. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, uh, I got, I got yeah, one more yeah. question. I, I got yeah. one more question, brother. I want to know... Like, could you speak on Tyra Perry making all these movies and, like, the Tyra Perry movie Precious, you know, does that have any, like, relevance, you know, because they say Holly Berry wanted to play, you know, a queen, uh, what they say, Nefertiti for the longest, and they still haven't granted her that movie. 
So I was just wondering, you know, could you well, speak on so much? Well, obviously Tyler Perry is a distraction. Um, is a distraction. Now, they say that the pressure is pretty good, and I think him and um, Oprah Winfrey. But the point I'm trying to make here is how many movies we're going to have on the black plight? Um, and when, you try, when, you, when kids are involved, they need to see us in greatness. They need to see us in greatness. And, and you know, in, in, in greatness. And so my point here is, you know, okay, you got the Medea thing and all, and that's, you know, all that stuff is, is, is fine, but my point here is there's got to be something with some substance in it. Now, with the Precious thing, that, you know, that was an Oprah thing also, I think, and, they, you know, and, and that was all good. But my point here is, but the rest of these things is actually talking down to you. It's actually nothing but um, 21st century good times, his movies. It's nothing but the same good time episode, 21st century style. You see what I'm saying? Just right. a 2000 such and such form of damn good times. When are you going to break out of that bullshit? Right. You see what I'm saying? You know, so it, that's what I'm just trying to say. It has to be something much more advanced. Like I've been telling people for years, when those boys were in their 20s, Ben Affleck and uh, Matt Damon won two Academy Awards for making Goodwill Hunting. And in that Goodwill Hunting, the police, the, and they wrote this thing, the actual United States Army come up and said that they wanted to use this guy's skill for chaos mathematics. Just for the simple fact that these guys was in their mid-twenties and would write some stuff that advanced and let you know, here is, you got somebody in his damn forties, damn near 50, writing this material shit. Right. And that's what I'm trying to say here is why how white folks is damn near 25 years up ahead of us. And so we need to get out of entertainment, you see what I'm saying, and try to understand some substance, you see what I'm saying. And that's why I, I was, I'm in protest to all those movies. I don't go see them. Because to me, it's an attack on my intelligence. It's talking down to me for me to go see some Medea goes to jail. You see what I'm saying? You know, that kind right. of foolishness. So my point here is that's another distraction. That's to keep people stupid. And you see what I'm saying? Hell, they got they got cartoons on Cartoon Network that's much more advanced than damn Madea shit. Right. You see that that stuff, you know. All right. So, you All right. Know. Thanks. All right. Thanks for the uh, call, brother. Thanks. All right. All right. Peace. Peace. Okay, we're gonna go to another caller. Caller from a four zero four area code. That's Bobby's area. Caller four zero four four five four. Caller, are you there? Yes, hello, Cola, are you there? Okay, I guess they just listening as well. Uh, real quick, before we go to the next caller, Bobby, I have a question from the chat room. Uh, the person, the giftmates.com, they have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, what's Bob, they want to know, Bobby, what is your view on other teachers who teach that the reptiles, Anunnaki, came down to this earth are the real evil ones, and they gave us all of our gods starting back from Sumeria and up through the ages. Okay, what this is, what this is, see, in order to understand what's going on, you got to actually own the certain text. I got that from Dr. Ben. See, Dr. Ben would put it up and then put, put something up a nigga's ass because he owned rare text. Dr. John Henry Clark owned rare text. So one thing about a person after uh, being a, being collecting these collecting all of this stuff for the last twenty something years, about twenty two years, I was able to collect these rare texts, and this whole thing started from the history of it with the reptilians, and all of that started from Zachariah Sitchin. Now Zachariah Sitchin is the one, and then later on, you know, Doctor York got into it. Um, 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 Zachariah Sitchin's works, as well as other people. But in all honesty, he was trying to make a history and create a history for a Jewish organization that wanted to uh, create a history around the land of Samaria that reference that 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 is more connected to the Tigers and the Euphrates, other than Mount Kilimanjaro, Africa, which which we know that the oldest people is is on the continent. So, in so many words. Back about 32 years ago, Zachariah Sitchin started coming, and he, start, he was doing this particular research. And so he took ancient texts, these same texts you can get, um, the myths and legends of Mesopotamia, 
Um, the Gilgamesh epics, the uh, the Enuma Elish epics, um, the create the, the Anana Queen of Heaven epics, um, the Chaldean Oracle epics, um, and these particular epics and stuff, and these particular texts that came from Samaria. He took those. He took Egyptian texts. And in so many words, when they would say reptilian and they would talk about the kundalini energy, or they would talk about Nagars, the serpent people, you see what I'm saying, talk about the people who have access to the kundalini energy, he would just write these things as reptilians from other planets. You see, so he basically, he basically created a new mythology out of existing mythology that was talking about the esoteric sciences. And I tell anybody this. Well, you know, they got these extraterrestrials. And I said, well, when you, have you seen these extraterrestrials and have you made contact with these extraterrestrials? Because if you have made contact and stuff, you're just arguing. Now, yes, they are extraterrestrials, but they are more on the spirit realm. So when we talk about these angels that we've been talking about, these Huna spirits from Hawaii, those are the extraterrestrials, but they are from the spirit realm. And so what he did, he took sublime mythology and made it literal and made it literal, and if you, if you ever own, so, then, then the problem here is, most people can only get stuff from secondary information because they don't own these texts. I am fortunate enough um, to, I didn't eat in the 90s. I bought books, and I bought books, and, and let me tell you how serious this was. I went to the bookstore seven days a week. Hmm. Hard to believe. Damn. I went from the bookstore from 1992 to 2000, if I, if, if I wasn't traveling seven days a week and when I would go to other cities, uh, and, all, and all my money went to buying these ancient texts and buying all this stuff uh, uh, and buying all, all this stuff and all. And I think I bought 100 books this year. So my point here is there's no end. So the, the, the thing about it here is, is the people are, are victims of secondary sources. So they're not able to tell when they get this particular information, well, I want to know what the ancient texts come from. Tell them sometimes, sometimes you go and say, well, study the ancient texts, and then come back with your conclusion, and not the secondary text, which is someone's theology. And basically that theology started with Zachariah Sitchin. It was furthered with Dr. York. It was also furthered with David Icke and that whole crew. But that's the theology. You see what I'm saying? That's the theology. But... If you study the ancient mythology, you will see that this stuff is more scientific and more spiritual than it is literal. Than it is literal history. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Bobby, I have a question. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to know, like, do, during the planet, when I'll be around, I notice, like, the ground will be shaking. I'll feel the vibration. And when I tell, ask other people, they say, no, nah, they're not feeling it. Could you give a quick breakdown? Do you know uh, about well, that? What this stuff is actually happening is, is the dimensional shift. It's no more than what happened to those Northwest pilots. Pilots. There's things that is happening. It's dimensional shift. We got some cats, and I talk about our cats. So they got the fighting down in the basement. This um, we we open a door and stuff, and we let them in the basement during the winter, because if we don't, them damn the, the mice start to come. And if, they, if, my, if those mice smell those kittens, they won't come in a hundred yards. I mean, even the squirrels won't even come in the yard. So we let them down in the, it's a partial basement. You know, it's mud and stuff down there. It's not like a, you know, a basement that, that you can live in. Anyway, we keep the door and we let them in there. They were fighting this morning. And I had to get up and go take a, a sistrum. And the sistrum is an is a, is a, is a in instrument that ISIS holds up. But it has a cat on the end, bass. And so I was rattling, and Linda was like, why are you rattling that system? I said, don't you remember last spring? They were doing all that hollering and carrying on, and once we rattle that system, they cool out. So in so many words, what we're talking about is a scientific aspect, but we're talking about things that is happening in other dimensions that animals can even hear. You see what I'm saying? And what was going on today with that was some type of eruption. Because 25 is also Mars and the god of war. And them cats got to fight in the day, and the day was the 25th. So certain things, are, certain things are actually happening. So when you feel these shifts and stuff like that, you are in tune to those. And more and more as times go on, within the next two years, we're going to get more 
and more in tune with those things. And I tell everybody right now, what you need to do is get you a small notebook or get you any kind of notebooks and start writing down any little small stuff that you think is spiritual. Like, like today, a, 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 a brother told us to come get a jerk turkey. A brother from Jamaica. And we went by his place. He was supposed to give us half for free just so we could take When we got there, he gave us a whole jerk turkey, about a 20-pound jerk turkey. Uh, uh, five, ten, about, 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 yeah, it, that thing is one of them big ones. A jerk turkey. Now, I ain't never heard of no jerk turkey, but it was off the chain. So y'all need to find y'all some Jamaicans that's still selling this shit within this holiday and get you a jerk turkey or get a piece of it. But the point I'm trying to make here, you said, what does that got to do with spirit? The man handed us the turkey and wouldn't accept no money. So you have to take that and put it in the notebook. This is a spiritual experience. Well, mm -hmm. number one, he didn't know that my birthday was Saturday. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you see, so the point I'm trying to make here is, and he gave it to me and my queen, her birthday was, was last Friday, but he gave us the, the jerk turkey. I'll be 48. Uh, uh, 48. You see what I'm saying? Um, which is 12. And 6 and 6 is the two surface down by the way, though, and 8 away, though. You see what I'm saying? So some stuff has happened, but the point here is you might think that that's nothing. But once you start writing down every little thing that you say that couldn't possibly occur, and then you start reading it, you'll say, wait a minute, I'm living in a spiritual world. But you have to document it. You got to keep a ma it's called a magical diary. And you start documenting stuff that you think is weird and strange. To give you an example, one day I had to rent money, had $700 in my wallet, and, and left the damn wallet in Marshalls. Yeah. And when I got back, them people that had my wallet locked up in a cabinet with the $700 in it. You see what I'm saying? That's spiritual. That's spiritual. So then you have to jot those things down. And then you start living into a spiritual world. And you start getting uh, certain things that start happening to you. These, you. They call them miracles in the biblical world. You need to start doing that. And then you will find out that you are living in a magical world on how you was able to get the rent paid the last year and didn't have no job. You see, different things. Give me some questions. Uh, Bobby, we, we, I know we, we deal with, uh, like, um, like, like Michael Jackson, him being symbolic to somebody in the spirit world or a mythological mm -hmm. figure right. or a saint. We dealt with Barack Obama. What's up with this cat, Jay-Z? Because it just seems like this cat just gets more and more powerful the older he gets. It's like he's at 40 years old, and he's. it seems like he's still on top of his game. He's still, the like, the the top rapper out, and he's just standing on the, on the Yankee float. I'm like, who is well, this and guy? He's, and he's intelligent, too. He's nobody slow leak. You see what I'm saying? And when he yeah. talks about how he puts the stuff together, it's genius. Um, it's, it's genius. You see what I'm saying? And I got to tap into that and stuff because, um, you know, everybody has certain things that they got to deal with in this physical world to get where they are. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, cutting deals and different things like that. But my point here was, he before he could get to that level, he had to be uh, Jay-Z before he was even recognizing his talent. Because they don't use people who are, are, are half-ass half talent. You see what I'm saying? A half-ass talent. And so there's something to that, and it has to be looked into. You know, it, it really has, has to be looked into. You see? Most definitely. Most definitely. Because because it ain't going away. And whether you like him or not, they say that the gods live and they live through the entertainers. You know? He, he, he calls himself Jehovah. A lot of the Christians is mad at him because he calls himself Jehovah. So, uh, well, okay. there you go. Yeah. There you go. And, and, and he's lining up under that J. Yeah. Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson, old J, yeah. who yeah. was crucified based on his talents. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Mm -hmm. uh, Magic oh, Johnson. I, with um, um, Michael Jackson, um, I didn't hear too much people talking about it. What's the take on it now that they saying his death was a murder? Well, just put it this way. Whether it was a murder or whether what happened, the spirit world will do what it has to do for you to meet your appointment you see what I'm saying? 
in destiny. He had a rendezvous with destiny, and whether he got killed, it's just, that's, just the, that's just the mechanism to get his ass out the body. But right, whatever right. it was, it, whatever it was, um, whatever it was, his appointment and his connection was the time he was supposed to go. It was written down. <clears throat> so, like they say when you're in the foxholes in war, the, 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 the soldiers say, if the bullet got your name on it, ain't nothing you can do. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. so, it's, whatever it is, all the stuff, like I did the, 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 the two major, especially the, the, the last one I did, the, the close, close to seven-hour one, um, um, uh, you know, all that stuff. And I'm going to tell you, he, he even had me to go to Detroit, and it was, they, threw, they damn near threw us out the building. I'm like, well, why am I here? And that night, we took a woman home, and she lived around the corner from Hitsville, Motown. And I'm like, oh, you wanted me to go to Motown to speak to the people in Motown because this is where you started out. You see what I'm saying? So that things happen. Like I say, I'm just, I'm just curious because every three times a month they're running Ali Rumble in the Jungle from Zaire, him and George Foreman. And I'm thinking it. I'll say it again. Uh, we might be looking at him next because, because before Michael Jackson, the, the greatest figure on the planet and was the fighter under that archangel Michael energy was, was Muhammad Ali. So there's some interesting stuff here. Give me some questions. Um, go back to the... Quick, did, uh, I just wanted to know real quick, did you see that movie 2012? Because I'm telling people, go see it. Well, if it... The, well, the main thing here is, is this, and I will put it this way. There's a blueprint that all these movies go by. The Day After Tomorrow went by the same blueprint. And that's the boy's book, Ice the Ultimate Disaster, um, um, what is that, May 5th, 2000. Ice the Ultimate Disaster by Richard Noon. Now, a lot of people, the book, uh, the book don't sell now because of the simple fact we've gone past the year 2000. But this is what I tell people about this. Sometimes he named that book uh, 20, uh, 2000 a lot of times because he didn't have to put that. He could have just said May 5th, 2000, some things are going to happen, which there was alignments on the spiritual realm. But to put, 20, to put May 5th, 2000 on the actual, um, uh, um, on, on the actual uh, uh, book, that meant that that book couldn't sell after 2000. So as a result, but that book is key because he was the first one to say that whenever, whatever goes down, the rich elite has Africa as the new motherland. They say that that was the motherland where humanity started. That will be the same place that we will go. That's and as good. a result of this last movie, 2012, what did they show on the map what was, was a safe haven? Africa. Africa. And they showed what? South Africa. That's now, right. they right now building amusement parks in South Africa, falsifying history, saying that, they, saying that the Europeans were there from the beginning. So they got a whole amusement park, and they got books and everything talking about the European origin of South Africa. And they can do that because when you write history, if it get a couple of hundred years old, people will believe anything like they believe Jesus. Right. You see what I'm saying? Which was a mythological character that later on the Roman literalists worked for 200 years to make it into the human character we have today. So the point I'm trying to make here, they're doing that, but nevertheless, they did show Africa. And in that book, Richard Noon's book, 552000, they talk about how Africa would be the new homeland for the survivors of anything, especially the European survivors of the elite. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't forget the dome that they setting up. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, so it's, you know, my, my thing here is, yeah, it was very interesting. It was, it was entertaining, if not anything, but the one key thing was, was that one now, was that movie. They, they put another 2012 out on Sci-Fi Channel, uh, which was the racist channel, because they kill a black person every Saturday night. That's a ritual. 
They put another one out on the Sci-Fi Channel, and they didn't show no black people in the 2012 movie. You see, and don't think that it's just hard. No, nothing, everything, nothing is by mistake. Just like Richard Pryor said about Logan's Run. There were no black people in Logan's Run as a movie about the future. It was almost as he said, you didn't intend us to be around. So they put the one on the Sci-Fi Channel, and didn't show no black people. You see what I'm saying? Right. No black people, no black survivors. You see, so it's just very interesting on how this thing goes. Give me some questions. Okay, let's, uh, well, I got a question here from the chat room from Sunrise. He wants to know your thoughts on black folks who suffer from, um, bi like, bipolar or, uh, you know, mental illnesses like bipolar or manic depression, schizophrenia, things like that. Well, um, it could be very well people uh, that get trapped on astral planes. It could be several things. Um, uh, let's put it this way. We do know now that autism, the rise in autistic children, is a child that comes on the planet, and he's tapped into both worlds. He never quite made it from the, 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 the world the spiritual world, and he's trapped between the spiritual world and the physical world. We do know that. We do know that um, spiritually that's what happened with people with Alzheimer's. What happens here is when they get a certain age, they uh, go to the spirit world, but they get trapped between the spirit world and the physical world. These are metaphysical aspects that's happening, uh, um, especially when, when scientists can't really figure out what they can do medically and stuff like that. Well, the bipolar, it can be two things. It could be a certain incident that jolted a person between these worlds. It could be drugs. You see what I'm saying? Or it could be somebody that's born that way, but it, but <coughs> it, could, be tra uh, it could be traumatic events. It could also be um, kundalini energy that rose before that person knew about it, or that person didn't have knowledge of the kundalini energy, somehow that kundalini energy rose um, up in that particular person and trapped that person between these two worlds. <coughs> you see, that's why, based on the initiation back in the day, the, 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 the yogis and stuff, you had to go through years of preparing and meditation to move the, the kundalini to a certain level. You see what I'm saying? So what about if a person... What about if a person that didn't know anything about that and walking along and somehow the kundalini just rose on them and they got trapped in two things and, and psychologically this is what the result was, the bipolar thing. So it's a variation of things. Yeah. Okay, all right. You know. let's, get to the, let's get to the next caller. Caller from uh, 563, every code, 563-505. Caller, are you there? Yes. Uh, my name is Lance Miguel. I'm from uh, Montgomery, Alabama, and I had like a comment, almost a question about, I got this movie from somebody called The Last Unicorn, I guess it was made yeah. in 1982. Yeah, excellent, 1982. Yeah, and then it was like, it was saying the one horn, and I was thinking that the one horn kind of meant like a feminine energy, like the unicorn represents like the divine yeah. mother god. The, horn, the, the, the unicorn, the horn, the horn represents the pineal gland. There's yeah, a book you can get yeah. called... There's a book you can get called The Lure of the Unicorn. Nate, and some of those, you know, the unicorn is in the Bible. Yeah. And they, 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 they talk about what, what but it's, not, it's the pineal gland is what it is. Remember yeah. in the movie Legend with Tom yeah. Cruise. Tom in that Cruise. movie, they broke that pineal gland off that unicorn, and the world was flung in yeah. the darkness. Well, that's what happened to us. Our yeah. pineal gland, which was the first eye, got covered over with the two visible eyes, and we came and fell into this world of darkness um, only uh, uh, trapped in, a, in this illusion. Yeah, yes, but, the uh, Glass Unicorn. Excellent yeah, movie. It's one of the best movies, and they just celebrated the 25th anniversary of it. You need to get that movie. Yes, and then I, I kind of felt like the magician represented, like, you know what I'm saying, he really had, he really wasn't no established magician, but he had faith in himself, and then when he realized his magic, he Told, like uh, magic, do as you will, do as you want to do. Well, but one thing about that magician in the movie, because he wasn't adept at being a magician, he was innocent. 
And by yeah, him being yeah. innocent, he was the only one that could actually encounter yeah, the yeah. unicorn. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And then, he, could and then, only, he could be the only one to encounter the uniform because he was innocent, which means he has room to grow into a great magician. But because he wasn't the master, he was innocent, and that is the only thing that can encounter a unicorn or fairies. If, yeah. if, if, you can only see the fairies. Children can see the fairies. And adults, if they are humble, as a child led them, you must become as children. If you get the, the movie The Spiderwick Chronicles, and I'm interested on this movie because the simple fact this movie came out the same day of the Jumpers movie. And the Jumpers movie has been on cable over a year and the Spiderwick Chronicles is yet to make it to the to the to the cable stations. And that is by design because they know that that movie is really some stuff that they don't want you to see. Too much which he knowledge. told Fairy Kingdoms, which is the ancestors, which is Beth and Leprechaun and all this stuff here. So yeah, yeah that, but that, that last unicorn is a major movie. I tell everybody to get that particular movie, especially when the unicorn got trapped into a human body. And she started complaining on how abnormal a human body was and the death that was around her. Yes. So, yes, it, it's awesome. The last unicorn. Yes. Okay, I think um, Bobby is disconnected, but um, are you, go, go ahead, Joel, go ahead. Um, real quick, with that same thing with the spider with Chronicles, isn't it ironic that the pig was the one to eat the evil beast? Eat the Remember evil what beast. Remember talking about earlier with uh, the pig eating? Exactly. 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 And there's a part in the um, book, they call it the pig. Let me see if I can find the name of this particular gene. They call it the, it's called the pig something gene. It's in um, the book I talk about, the uh Isis thesis by Judy K. King, and they talk about this pig gene that whenever humans come in contact, that they activate this pig gene, it traps the spirit back into dormancy. So all the work you work for, this pig gene come up in the actual mark, and, and they call it the something, let me see if I can find the, um, the name right quick, but um, the, the hog squeal, and he spit in the eyes of the children, and they could see the ferret. That was an excellent movie. Yes, uh, the Spiderwick Chronicles. You know, the, the, Sp the Spiderwick Chronicles and the science in that. Um, but let me see if I can find the name of this particular gene. Um, it's called, uh, uh, um, so I can find it right quick. Uh, and so we can see the name of this gene. Um, it's in the, um, it's in the Isis uh, thesis. But it's not in the, uh, I got to go through the book again because it's not in the index um, what this particular, this particular gene is. But, um, it's, you know, and I think it has something to do with the, 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 the trichinosis, trichinosis worm and all of that stuff too. But it's in this particular, in the Egyptian text they talk about it. But that hog squeal, yeah, that was some stuff. And he was the one that ate the evil, ate the evil beast. That's right. Yeah. Um, the and, 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 guess what they call, and guess what they call the pig in the Book of the Gates, the Book of the Dead? They call him the Eater of Souls. Mm. In this particular case, the soul is the ego, the false self that supposes itself to be real, but really is not real at all. It needs attention, needs competition. You see what I'm saying? Needs all the things that humans need. Yes. I got, I got a quick question about the ego. I've been asking a lot of speakers, you know, and I get yeah. a lot of different answers on the subject of the e on the ego. Yeah. Is the ego something that that is necessary? Because I find that all you know when they talk about all the great entertainers or all the great athletes, they say in order to be great, in order to be the greatest at what you do, you have to have this big ego. Like, well, let's even, put it this even, way. Even even uh, Kanye. And Beyonce, they had the song, I Got a uh, Big Ego. Right, yeah. Well, they yeah. talk about the greatest people in history had a high opinion of themselves on that particular level, a prima donna type of level. Uh, the ego is, is useful in two planes. We have one plane, which is the spiritual plane, where we used to live. And it was based on the plane where our souls used to reside. Then as we go into the physical plane, our egos develop, which is our false self. And the ego developed as a defense mechanism 
of fear is all it is. It's a series of fears, but those fears was to protect us down here. So we needed those fears to be, be protected in a hostile physical world. And as a result, it grew into an essence of our own being. And in so many words, the ego is nothing but a series of fears. These fears protected us. You see what I'm saying? Well, protected us. But those fears grew together and made a personality of its own. And now that is very bad. So the simple fact is we can't get, because it's a, it's, it's a, it's a, a personality of a functioning fear, we can't get back to the true self, which was our soul, which is the real self, because the false self, a combination of fears, you see what I'm saying, is, ta is, is, is taking over. Get a movie called Defending Your Life. Defending Your Life with Albert Brooks and Meryl Streep. Defending Your Life. And when they go to heaven, they both of them are dead. When they go to heaven, they have to defend their life. But uh, the guy tells him, well, you have a whole group of fears down, um, a, a whole group of fears on this um, other realm. And we have to find out, have you done enough to get rid of these fears so you can go on to the next level? We have to send you back down to earth. And it's interesting, Albert Brooks was a Jew, and he wrote this thing. You see, he, 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 wrote these, he wrote this thing. Unbelievable. It lets you know that um, don't let nobody fool you. What you want, these, these Jews, they teach their people important stuff. You see what I'm saying? I'm talking about this European Jew. They teach them import, important things so he just being a regular comedian, he can write this metaphysical movie that is one of the excellent movies that explain this ego, but you've got to understand the whole fear thing. Yes, but that is not going to be needed for where we're going now. You see what I'm saying? Uh, you know, on that particular level, we've got to get rid of those fears. Right, you right. see, and the fears right. because of our fears it leads to desires. Sometimes you desire something because you fear not having it. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Or you want to, you want to um, medicate your fears. You see what I'm saying? With desires, you know. You see what I'm saying? With desires, you know. You know. Sometimes it's best to face the wall. You see what I'm saying? You run out of damn money. That might be that. That might be some of those desires dissipate and dissolve, and you say, "Hey, it ain't that bad anyway. It was only a fear of mine that I had to have this." You see what I'm saying? You know. So this is very interesting. Yes. All right. Let's get to uh, another call. We only got ten minutes left. You gonna come back to do the part two, Bobby? Because we gotta do a part yeah. two to this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we yeah, no have problem. to do a, a, a part two next week or something. Uh, I'm going to call you, and, you know, we'll talk about it, but definitely. Yeah, we'll, we'll we go with ten, it. We got ten minutes left, y'all. Um, before we go to the next caller, Bobby, give them your number one more time if they need, um, if they um, want to get some of your material. Yes, like I said, the Angelic Stimulus Package, the picture package, which is out of sight, because not only do you get 50 pictures, you also get the color pictures of the king and queen of Sudan that I, that I was dealing with earlier. That number is 678-358-1055, 678-358-1055. And you can call that number to get those particular products, you see what I'm saying, that we have, uh, that we have. And we, we, we're constantly producing other things. I'm getting ready to produce uh, some, some, some money shields that you can put on your thing for it's, it's two shields for prosperity and two shields for 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 healing, and you know over in Europe they charge you for these talents and a lot of money, but I'm gonna produce them on pictures and you got to do is just put them on your wall, so we're gonna have those available too within a week, you see so, um so you know, contact me for the angelic stimulus package, the pictures, the reading, and the DVD. We got the DVDs. As well as these new talismans and all, yes. Okay, let's get to the next call. We got nine minutes left, so let's hurry up, get to the caller. Caller from a 786, every call, 786-319. Caller, are you there? Yes, hello, caller, are you there? 786-319. Okay, I guess they just listening. We're going to have to get to the next one. Caller from a 407 area code. Are you there, caller? Yeah, I'm here. You got a question? A quick question for Brother Bobby? Yeah, I got a quick question, um, and I got a uh, statement too. Um, that number that you just gave off, 
Mm -hmm. uh, is that, an, is that an, a direct number or is it like another type of number to get at you? No, no that's, that's, a, that's, that's the direct number to get at me. But it's, you know, All right. it's for business well, purposes I, more than uh, hobnobbing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, ain't nobody trying to waste your time, man. You know? Yeah. But because um, I had did this song called A Magical Papyrus of 2012, right? Uh-huh. And it's got like, and it's, it's got, it's kind of like got this ritualistic, like, mm -hmm vibe to it but you know what I'm saying a lot of people that I'm dealing with they can't they don't even know about a lot of things that is even going mm -hmm. on so they can't even tap into it so you yeah. know what I mean I wanted to see if I can get it out to you I mean I think yeah, it's okay. really like well, well hit me up and we talk about it alright okay, that's brother. what's up yeah. peace, man. Appreci appreciate okay, your work though man alright brother alright All right. All right, call up from uh, 773 every call 773-224 call are you there Seven seven three two two four. Call, are you there? I guess they just listening as well. We're gonna move on to a call from a three two three two nine nine. Every code. Call, are you there? Three two three. Yes, I'm here. How you doing, sis? You got a uh, question for you? Brother Bobby? Yes, I remember um, when I watched one of your YouTube. Uh, it was back in 1994, and I live in the Los Angeles area. Mm -hmm. And I remember you were saying about the area was still standing because people praying or keeping a certain certain energy up. And another brother had called and said he feel movements and I do too when I'm at home and I'm, I'm listening to your lectures, I just mm -hmm. you know, researching. Yeah. I feel movements and I'm like, is it an earthquake? And then, you know, not too long ago in Samonia uh Simonia, it was a tsunami. Right. So I get and I think different that's, feelings that's, and I think it was that tsunami that actually unleashed these Huna gods that we getting ready to deal with. Right. Uh they came with the brother from um, Chattanooga. Brother Taurus, and I think the little, that, that 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 was what that was. Um, I said that the, based on California, because there were so many black people, the black people's energy was holding oh, yeah, up California. Out here, and they got chemtrails coming up on us every and, hour. And, and on, yeah, hour. But, and black people just only means the original people. So, uh, uh, orig, original people. So I don't want to because because like I said, we found a whole family of white folks disconnected with us. So I want to reiterate, we talk about, when we say that, we're talking about the ones that retain that melanin. You see what I'm saying? These original, and, and, and that has a lot to do with the earth total um, um, of what, uh, uh, you know, there's a book called Explorer Race, where the Europeans said if, they, if a certain amount of um, black people was eliminated from the planet, the planet wouldn't survive. Um, it's a book called Explorer Race. I can't think of the guy's name, Michael something. They wrote this book. It wasn't Michael Tessari, and it was another guy called, um, can't think of his name right now, but wrote a book called Explorer Race, and he dealt with those things. And what he was dealing with when he was talking about these, these people, he said these African Americans, no matter how much they, how badly they express themselves, because there was some, some European saying, well, you know, they, they got a problem with the way we behave. Right. They were saying no matter how they express themselves, they are needed as a rootstock uh, to save the earth. And as a result, we saw the results of that in California. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also at the zoo here, they had a um, lion that was, they put the pigs, little baby pigs, covered in a, a lion's, like, you know, how they cover up the dogs. And the lion was, uh, you know, open to the pigs. And I was telling my other conscious friend about it. He was like, because the lion is going to be a mother from the first thought, she's not going to, like, get them. But I was like, why do they want to change up the universal law? Why is this at the Oh, like zoo? I said, man, I, I, got a, I got a tape. I'm getting ready to produce. I got a thing. A documentary on genetic um, modification, um, on uh, 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 genetic mod genetically mod modified animals right. and humans and stuff. I'm getting ready to do this stuff. What I was talking about to lappy your fish at the beginning. I'm getting ready to produce this, this 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 thing. I got it off the documentary channel, and so I'm gonna shoot you one, Rich. Um, whenever whenever the the, the the one comes back, the lecture comes back to South Carolina. I'm going I'm to I'm shoot you one of these things. You got to put this shit out on. You got to put this stuff out. Yeah, because yeah. It, 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 it's, it's, they're showing it, man. I mean, it's unbelievable. You, it's unbelievable the things that they was doing on the Frankenstein stuff. And, there's, you know, and so they, you know, they, you know like I said, they, they're not going to put it on mainstream TV. A lot of people don't even have a documentary channel. And they might show it once. They might not show it a, again for another year. But I got it. Right, you see what yeah. I'm saying? So we're going to put this thing out. I and they, man, they're doing all kinds of things. Let me tell you how, yeah. what kind of genetic stuff they're doing. They got these, these, these chickens that is in these farms where they raise these chickens. Well, the little chickadees or the biddies, which is the baby chickens, 
the mothers are real protected of them. And, they, and so the farms was having problems with it. So what they did is, is they grafted out, they genetically took out the mother gene of the chickens so that they wouldn't have that protection and they can do what they want with the chickens because they done took the mother gene out of the chickens. All this is in that damn documentary. Unbelievable stuff. So, yeah, they're playing all kind of um, things. Yeah, yes. like with animals. I mean, it's like we have no control of hey, well, I mean, hey, whatever they're doing with animals, <laughs> that is nothing compared to what they're doing with they're doing humans. Us. I mean, making us yeah. like a human battery. What they're doing with humans. I mean, right. uh, they kill more, more children than killed in Chicago this year than Afghanistan. Yeah. And you know, you see what I'm saying? That's some MK Ultra stuff. You best believe. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? All of a sudden, Barack Obama is inaugurated, and he's from Chicago, uh, his last... Uh, re residents, and all of a sudden, all the kids in Chicago's dying. Right. You see what I'm saying? They're dying around. all over. Yeah. But my point here is, they didn't kill more kids in Chicago since Jack, since the inauguration, than, than Afghanistan has had, and that's a law. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So you best for know that you best know that's MK all today. They are programming these children to kill each other. You see what I'm saying? I yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm, okay. I'll give you okay. a call, Bobby. Thank you. All right. Love hotel, y'all. Right. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, real quick, um, what about the vaccine, that the H1N1 that they're giving them up their noses? Well, it's interesting that you say that because they give them that. They, what they do is they give them that H1N1 up their nose. And when, and when the children is, and what happens is, now you know it's the H1N1, the, the vaccine is, Six different forms of the flu, maybe seven by now. So when they go home with the one with the, with the flu, when they go home with the one with the nose, they breathe it into their parents, and the parents come down with the flu, and they got to go get the damn vaccine. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Because it's airborne, so it's a lot of stuff. Mm. Damn, so they're crazy. saying what you need to do is to gargle and clean your mouth out with hydrogen peroxide. Don't swallow it. Just clean your mouth out and rinse it out with water, no mm. sink water. And then you need to take a little bit on a on a on a, on a Q-tip and put in your nose and clean your nose out with hydrogen peroxide uh, because the flu settles in your nostrils based on you breathing out here with these people and keep your hands washed. You see what I'm saying? And another thing, stay off that pig because they're not telling you that the pigs became contaminated and they had the first case in October. That's when they and they will they will only say it once on the news. That so you won't so it won't be what we didn't tell you. They said it one day in October that they, they found the H one N one virus in the swine. So stay off the swine. Now you you know what that means. That means that this Christmas, with all that damn ham and this Thanksgiving, you see what I'm saying? You gonna have some stuff, especially if that vaccine is a time release. You see what I'm saying? I, 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 we only got 45 seconds left. Um, we're going to have bro Brother Bobby back on here for part two next week. Um, I yeah. don't know exactly what day we're going to talk about it. To find out, go to the website, www.undergroundrailroadnet.com. I'll post it on there later on this week. I want to thank Brother Bobby for speaking. I want to thank my co-host, Brother Joel, a.k.a. And, she right. and what we'll do next week is we will yeah. give most of the show to call in. That okay, way we yeah. can get these questions, yeah. We'll have some more information, don't get me wrong. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I ain't never had a loss of that. But, you know, uh -huh. you know, it's never enough time for question and answer. So we'll uh, right, we'll we tweak some of those things. Five seconds so have your questions ready. Hmm? All right, we're we going to see you all next week. Peace, everybody. Yes. Peace. All right. All right, peace, y'all. Welcome to another episode of Underground Railroad Radio. Brother Rich, uh, with your co-host, uh, Brother Vashivanu. Brother Vashivanu, are you there? Yes, I am. What's up? Oh, okay, brother. Yeah, we got Brother Bobby on the show today. Again, I'm about to connect Brother Bobby in a second. This is part two to the power of mythology. If you missed part one, I advise you to go listen to it. I received a great, great response from it. I mean, the people loved it. Bobby definitely, Bobby was so much in his own, man, I didn't even want to cut him off, Joel. I didn't even want to say nothing. I, I, just, know, tried, I, just, <laughs> tried to be, I just tried to be quiet, man, because he just he tapped into that zone for real, for real. But um, we're doing part two today. Hopefully, 
we should get the brother in the New York real soon, uh, hopefully, you know, by, I guess, by Black History Month. But we're going to work on that. As soon as we find something out, we definitely going to let the people know. Um, real quick, uh, go to the website, www.undergroundrailroadnet.com. I got the Conscious DVDs there as well as um, if you miss any blog talk radio broadcast, it, it, it gets played there over and over again. So you can go there to listen to the show again or just to see some YouTube videos on what's going on that the news is not reporting. I put, you know, like alternative news clips on there and uh, as well as other information. We're going to start the show. Oh, brothers, you are. Tell them how to uh, contact you um, for the cake, for the Cajun water, brother. 347. 595-3847. That's yes, 347-595-3847. Yeah, this is the brother that got the alkaline water, so if anybody's interested, make sure you hit up the brother. Uh, without no further ado, we got to bring on the man known as Bobby Hammond. Brother Bobby Hammond, are you there? Oh, yes, most definitely. <laughs> you know, right. back, in the, back in, the, in the pocket, the yeah. Live Talk, the Underground Railroad, and it's all good. Hey, I it's all I good. I received a, a huge response from your last blog talk. I mean, huge. Oh, yeah. Huge. Mm -hmm. so, well, people, it's great. Yeah. And, um, yes, and that's, you know, that's what time it is. I guess you might as well just chalk it up to technology. This is the new medium. I mean, yeah. you know, we did, the, we did the lecture circuits and all. Went all over the place, all over the country, out of the country. And we did that, you know, it's been going on, it'll be 18 years this June since I started. Mm. But um, it actually started from, from the Afrocentric movement. Um, and we got to pay homage to those brothers, um, Dr. John Henry Clark, Asa Hilliard, Ivan Van Surtema, Francis Cress Wilson, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakinen, um, Naeem Akbar, and the whole host of cadre of masters, and um, as a result, this has been going on. It's been ongoing, and so basically, I inherited um, that system from them. They did the history thing. I came with the mystery thing, and I was able and was pleased to get in on the last um, vestiges of them in their particular lecture system. You know, um, um, I I did a. One, I was glad to do a 1994 Melanin Conference with Tony Broder, Dr. Ben, um, John Henry Clark. And if anybody has ever had the uh, opportunity to meet Brother John Henry Clark before he passed on, you can consider yourself blessed. And anybody knows who's met him, there's never been much of a beautiful soul. And I could even say that about Dr. Ben. Um, about Dr. Ben. You know, Dr. Ben, one thing we could say about Dr. Ben, he loved black people. And he would go out his way just to go eat at a black restaurant, even if it was 20 miles out. You see, and he was a master. Somebody said they were in Africa, in the, in the Sahara. Uh, there was some place they got lost, and they didn't know where the hell they were. And Dr. Ben said, don't worry about it, and looked up in the sky and started divining them stars and got the people home. That's Man. how bad this brother was. Yeah, that's how bad this brother was. So just so we, we, we come from a long tradition. You see, and like I said, I, the metaphysical tradition with, with Delbert Blair, um, the great master C. Freeman Elliott made the transition, and so on, which leads us to a brother named Dr. Goss, Dr. Paul Goss at New Body Products, who made mention about something recently that I must share with you because um, he set the record straight on what was going on. And then that led me to break some other systems and then tie those two things together. Um, before I get into that, I want to dedicate this, uh, this uh, blog talk to the god Ganesha. That's G-A-N-E-S-H-A. So you go on your websites and look up the Hindu god Ganesha. That's the elephant head deity. It's the most popular deity in India. And he's real powerful right now. And he's going to be real powerful for this Christmas vacation. He is the opener of the way. He is the Hindu 
Legba, the Hindu Tahuti, the Hindu Anubis, any one of these gods that opened the way, the Hindu Baron Samdi who opens the way to the underworld, um, to the underworld. And um, his, power, his power is unprecedented right now. Um, so if you can frequent marshals, I know if for people around the country, you can go to Ross. That's the other people. You go to Ross, you go to TJ Maxx, you can go to Marshall's, and you can get these statues now. Because they were doing these Buddha statues for years, and all of a sudden, they started um, bringing in these Ganesha statues. So if you're in the New York area, I think you just have to just frequent um, to get the cheap ones. You know, uh, um, um, uh, Marshall's or TJ Maxx. Now, if not, you could always go to the Hindu section. There's a whole section around, all around um, Soho and all that particular area, West 4th Street, and you can get you, but you want to get you a Ganesha, Ganesha statue to open the ways because he's real powerful right now. Um, he's even come and said that he is a form of Archangel Michael. I'm like, oh, man. So this thing is all tied together. It's called a table of correspondence, and we got to correspond with all these deities, especially them because I'm going to tell you something. Number one, the... You can get Ivan Van Sertima's African presence in early Asia, African presence in early Europe, African presence in early America. You see, I, and um, it's interesting here because Ganesha and the whole Hindu pantheon is you, not only do you have the Dravidians, but what they're not telling you is the original Aryans were black people. The original Aryans were black people or indigenous people. The white Aryan didn't come into existence until the 1930s or the 1920s and 1930s when they took Blavatsky's works of the secret doctrines and learned about the Aryan and then usurped that because they had to, um, they had to um, uh, usurp that as to become an ancient people. I don't want to say white people. I'm talking about these Germans, the ones that call themselves Aryans. And it's just interesting here because you got your whole Aryan nation in the prisons now, and they don't even know. They are, they are shouting the Aryan, and they don't even know. That's brothers and sisters. You see, there's a whole thing on that. So I just wanted to just put that out there. But right now, Ganesha is real powerful, so we want to uh, give Ganesha a shout-out and tell Ganesha to open the way. But I want the people who never heard of him to go on the Internet um, go on the internet and um, look him up because he's real powerful right now, and there might be some blessings for you. Um, that can even enhance your angelic stimulus package. And so as you people that want to get the angelic stimulus package, you know you can call 678-358-1055. And not only do you get the angelic stimulus package that you've been seeing on the Internet, um, but also um, we sell my DVDs, which is anybody. So a lot of the stuff that we sell, we sell three times as much as you see on um, on, on, on YouTube, and these are ones that you can't get on YouTube. So these are catalog stuff that goes back for 18 years. And, and uh, so, you know, and it's, it's over 300 of them. So I'm just saying you can inquire about that. Another good special we have here is those beautiful pictures that's real powerful that you see on, um, that you see on, the, uh, um, on, my, on the YouTube behind me when I'm doing my lectures. We sell... We've amassed so many of them until we sell about $100 worth for $50. Um, you said I'm going to quote no price, but um, just, just to put that in. Now, to go back to what I want to deal with right now that's very urgent is two things. First of all, this is interesting here that um, uh, Tiger Woods got oh, his nigga wake-up call. <laughs> got his nigga wake-up call. <laughs> Now, I wouldn't be pouncing down on him, but let me tell you some things about it. He was a person that truly, really didn't like being black. He took offense to it. As a matter of fact, it was embarrassing on what he did back in, um, on the 60-year anniversary of um, Jackie Robinson breaking the color line. Bill Clinton, who was the president at that time, thought it would be nice that uh, Jackie Robinson's 60th anniversary or breaking the color line, which made it to the point where even black people could play in the sports with modern-day sports, integrated sports. So it was a big thing. So as a result, they decided, well, let's get Tiger Woods since he just won the Masters, and although they've had black pro golfers before him, 
until he started winning at that particular level and people started paying attention to him, they considered that a barrier that was broken, a breaking of a color line. You see what I'm saying? So they invited him to come and do a celebration with Jackie Robinson's beautiful wife on the 60th anniversary. You see what I'm saying? And he was appalled by the idea and turned it down because he didn't want to be associated with the black athlete. Man. And turned it down, which was an embarrassment. He is the president of the United States inviting you to come deal with a ceremony of Jackie Robinson, and it was actually for Jackie Robinson's wife. And it's an embarrassment for you to turn that down when we don't get celebrated that often. We should jump at the chance. You see them? We, we should jump at the chance. He felt appalled by it and turned it down and later on had to go and apologize to the wife after somebody pulled his coattail. You see what I'm saying? He also, um, he also spoke out against the Katrina victims. He was embarrassed when the ones was looting and said they need to be ashamed of themselves. You see what I'm saying? My point here is, hey, these people are in turmoil, and we know that it was a, it, it was, it, they blew the levees because New Orleans weathered the storm. So if ever was some conspiracy on that, that's what it was. You see what I'm saying? So my point here is, OJ's gone. Michael is gone. You the new OJ. And as a result, here it is, his best of friends is turning against him now. Just like they did OJ. His best of friends is turning against him now. You see what I'm saying? You know, because you needed your nigga wake up call. And in this particular case, unlike OJ, he don't have a black community behind him because we never knew him that way. Because he never reached out that way. It's one thing to do private philanthropy, but it's another thing to have a show of force and show up. You see what I'm saying? So this is very interesting because you had two people get their nigga wake-up calls this year. First, it was Henry Louis Gates, who 10 years ago did a derogative uh, PBS special and said on that special that if it wasn't for the black people in West Africa, the slave trade wouldn't have been able to happen and made this foolishness up, then went to Egypt and said, I'm going to Nubia to trace the black pharaohs, asked to say that the pharaohs weren't black. You see what I'm saying? So when he came up with this foolishness, I think it was a, a, a group of them, Leonard Jeffries, and it might have been Brian Sutter, it was a bunch of them that headed for Harvard to challenge him on this, and the nigga ran. Ten years to the day, ten years later, he steps out on the porch, and that white cop giving his nigga wake-up call, and the white cop didn't even apologize. You see what I'm saying? When they arrested him in his own house. But people don't understand cause and effect. People don't understand cause and effect. So I just wanted to put that type of stuff down. Now, going into some things, and I might have mentioned it, Hey, hey, uh, I might have mentioned this thing. Uh, hey, Kenya. Yes. Uh, let me just give the uh, guest call the caller number six four six seven two seven two zero three nine. If you want to call in and talk to uh, Brother Bobby Hammond. Uh, before you get back into that, Brother Bobby, I just wanted to ask one question. You yes. Um, yes. That, talked about the Tiger Woods. What do you think about this couple getting past Secret Service? all the way to the commander-in-chief, Obama, enough to shake his Listen, hand. And, and I'm not stupid. <laughs> yeah, I'm not stupid not to know a ritual what's going on. Just it's, it's no different than when they breached this man's passport and got all his information. Remember when he was running and they breached this man's passport and got all his information when he was running for president? You're talking the same science or uh, whenever – this whole thing of his doggone birth certificate up in, you know, um, in question. So it's always been a few things. We're talking about a man, and you know, let me, let me tell you what's really, really messed up about this. This man gets more death threats than not only any other president, but he's gotten more death threats than any other living human that ever lived in the United States. Mm. You see what I'm saying? That's how much death threat this man got. And you mean to tell me? This man's first state dinner, and you're going to, and it's a breach of, uh, and it was a breach 
of security, I don't buy that. I don't buy it. You see what I'm saying? It's, it, you know, ain't that much coincidence in the world. I don't buy that. It had to happen on his watch. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, everything is everything. And my point here is it never happened before. And all of a sudden this thing is going to happen. You see, so um, you're right on that. You see, I think it's still ritualistic. It is still ritualistic. You see what I'm saying? So it's just, it's just interesting how this whole thing goes down, you know. So, uh, yes. So any, any other commentary, any other? Yeah, uh, Joel, you got any questions before we get into the, um, the callers? Well, I just want to say real quick, um, with the Ganesha, I know you can get those Ganesha statues real cheap. Um, I'll give that out later in the end of the show. Good, so good, this, good. And give the people uh, to get the Ganesha statues. Yeah, so that's a, that's a, New York. Yeah, that's a so that's a show of force. You want um, one, one thing about Ganesha, real quick. Um, you need to get candle quartz. This is certain things that I know personally that he like candle quartz. Candle quartz. He also loves red. Red and yellow is his color, but mainly red. If you can get some red, is is real powerful for him. Another thing too, you if you're supposed to invoke him in the matters of uh, if if you're dealing with sexual intercourse, you want to invoke him before you enter. That way, that your sex can actually end up spiritual, and and certain things can go the right way. You want to invoke him for sexual intercourse. You also want to invoke him for, like I said, for any kind of endeavor that you have obstacles naturally, because he's the remover of obstacles. But you also want to invoke him. Um, you also want to invoke him when you right before you read, when you want to read books. A lot of people. When you have problems reading these books, it's because you got problems getting into the mindset of some of these authors. You see what I'm saying? Some of these authors are real. If you ever, if you ever um, try to read some German authors like um, Rudolf Steiner and, and, German, and German scholars and stuff, you know, they can be very rigid. So you want to invoke, um, you want to invoke him when you want to read and get clarity on these particular books and, and let it flow a certain way, and that's, and, and that's one that can, can also help you, too. So I want to deal with a few things. I talked about this woman. I don't know if I talked about last week, Henrietta Lacks. Henrietta Lacks, there's a book that's coming out in February called The Immortal Genes of Henrietta Lacks. And basically they, they took this black woman's genes in 1951 and they grew these genes. And she died shortly after they took these genes. But she was already, well, I think she was dying from cancer, so they got her genes. And they grew these genes and they've been using these genes as a super atom or a super gene to go with any kind of the, any of the last developments for the last 50 years, um, uh, for the, over the last 50 years, any type of breakthrough in cures. It was Henrietta Lacks' genes that they put with it. Even took her genes in space. <clears throat> you see what I'm saying? We'd heard before that they would um, spray a certain amount of melanin um, to go through the atmosphere and different things. So they even took her genes to space. So they did so much on these genes. Um, but it's like anything else. We come to find out that it, 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 she's just the one that they documented her genes. It wasn't like her genes was any different than any other black woman. But this is one of the keys on whether these, so we need to find out where the research, where these research goes. It's just like they had the uh, eugenics program. The eugenics program was based on genetics. And they was trying to make out that black people were inferior. And they had this whole eugenics program, and Adolf Hitler and all of them um, was a part of that, was a part of this whole eugenics program. And they wanted to sterilize black people and all this type of stuff. But anyway, that eugenics program of trying to curtail black growth in America and around the earth, you see what I'm saying, went into the eugenics program turned into Planned Parenthood. And then they have a cadre of thousands of abortion clinics all in the black community. So you need to track these things. So this Henrietta Lacks program, it turned into what we now know as stem cell research. Mm. Now, now, this is the key because, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, Obama lifted the ban on stem cell research. Well, this is where... Um, this is where this research comes in, and this is where this comes in when I was talking about Dr. Paul Goss. Because I got a call the day that Obama lifted the ban on stem cell research. 
and um, the, the sister named Shakira, which is out, and she lives out in um, Phoenix, and she's, um, I'm, I'm 48, November 28th. She was 78, November 28th. Um, you see, she's born 1931, I was born 1961. Um, she immediately called the day after he lifted the stem cell research ban, and she made it known to me that Paul Goss, who had been doing work in this particular thing and understand, found out that the stem cells, the only ones that work is coming from black children or black fetuses or whatever you want to call it. So it has to be on an original indigenous primordial um, African lineage, you see what I'm saying, um, where, uh, 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 it's just like that interferon thing where these was coming from the testicles of, 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 of black children to, uh, um, to, to this, this interferon stuff, um, and their whole line of child murders was based on that. Well, it's this, this research that we're dealing with with stem cells is talking about black fetuses, or uh, black, whatever you want to call it, if you want to call it a fetus or whatever you want to call it at the particular time where they're dealing with this stem cell research. It's all based on black fetuses, which leads us to the other link. The other link here is philanthropy and your boy, Mr. Bill Gates, which is now his whole campaign is in Africa. His whole cam campaign is about Africa. Now, um... He said that the Warren Buffett, the two richest men in this country, him and Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett turned him on to the, the latest things. I guess this is what billionaires or trillionaires should do. And in so many words, what they do under the guise of philanthropy, you see what I'm saying? And, and even Cornel West even said philanthropy, you know, there is no such thing as um, it, it's this particular philanthropy as serving humanity. This is all nothing but neocolonialism. Try to understand. So what happens is this. They go to these underdeveloped countries that they purposely underdeveloped, and they got this word called developing nations. I heard uh, Bill Gates last Sunday, two Sundays ago, use this, thing, use this thing about ten times in a conversation. Developing nations. In so many words, what they are saying, these rich people, you've got to understand the mindset of these particular global elite is this. If you are not a developed country because we didn't make sure you developed in the last 100 years, if you're not a developed country, then in so many words, you're not only is the land up for grab for research resources, we know that. We know that the cell phone can't even be possible now unless it was some stuff from Africa. Right. Nevertheless, that's been going on for uh, close to 200 years. But we also know that when they say this, it's up for grabs. The people are up for grabs. So in so many words, by you being a philanthropist and you give these companies, these, these countries this money, you get to own the people. But how do you get to own the people? You don't necessarily have to get to own the people on the neo-colonial, on the colo old colonial way of, of, of colonization. You can own the people through one way. And Bill Gates announced what it was. He said, we are over there doing DNA sequencing. So they get to own the people based on the DNA. You see what I'm saying? And then bring that DNA to market so that they could so that they can so people could buy the DNA from them. It's just like Donald Trump back in the eighties was trying to buy up airspace. You know, he said, Well I'll buy the space over your building. So in the future I can build you see what I'm saying, like that was the same thing. We could get this DNA and we, we, we sequence this DNA, we package this DNA for sale. So it's, you see what I'm saying? So it's not, a, not only it's a form of genetic slavery, you see what I'm saying? And it's interesting here, because when I uh, come to find out there was a woman, a white girl from Emory, which is, which is, which is uh, the Harvard of the South, Coca-Cola made a whole university down here, down there. They funded a whole university down here. And it's, it's the Harvard of the South. And in the university, I think this, this white girl just got something like um, maybe 12, uh, 19 million dollars to go to Ethiopia uh, to sequence the DNA and deal with the DNA in Ethiopia. I'm talking about because they got, um, they, their birth rate is low, uh, 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 something about, you know, uh, the birth rate is um, infant mortality rate. 
Now, you know, doggone well, the DNA ain't got nothing to do with them saving no children. You see what I'm saying? Saving no children. You see, when we already know the plan that they were supposed to take billions of people off the earth because they didn't want to feed them. So in this particular case, going to Ethiopia, your Kush, that's like going to the center of Mount Kilimanjaro, uh, Punt, Somalia, the whole nine yards on the battle of the, some of the oldest people on the planet and trying to get that particular DNA. So just just show you the type of things is actually going just actually going down and this stem cell and all that has a lot to do with it you see what i'm saying now how does this connect with mythology you want to go read the books you want to go read the books the book of enoch by rh charles now they just put out there were several of these books is very expensive but samuel wiser just put out a purple new book of enoch about four about um fourteen dollars um, you can get it at Barnes and Nobles, Borders, or what have you. It's a new book of Enoch that was put out in in 2003. And in that book of Enoch, they even talk about how we would be made small by the powers, and they say we would even be we would even be made in the aspect of food. You see what I'm saying? In food, and they talk about how we would bow our heads. We would bow our heads, but we couldn't find no one that would even hearken a ear to listen to our complaints. And they talk about all this tragedy that was going to go on. They also talk about the origin of the war in heaven that we just, you know, the, the uh, war in heaven, which is there's a truth on. But they go in there, but it was very interesting at this particular time, based on this book of Enoch, what they see. And they say... They make mention in this book of Enoch of the time when these genocides will be going on, and they say it will be the time of steel mountains. Steel mountains. Anybody know a steel mountain is a building? A building's frame is made out of steel before they put the brick or whatever the stone or whatever they're doing. And they say it will be in the time of steel mountains. So they were talking about the modern times. You see, then they talk about there will be a group of these particular people who look like the enemy, who has been beating you down, will start writing books for you, and will start bringing this particular information out, and they say, do not throw the baby out with the bathwater, which it meant was there's a symbiotic relationship with white folks who are bringing this particular information to full because it's time and it will come to pass, because in the book of Enoch, not in the book of Enoch, in the Gospel of Thomas, which was one of the books that didn't make it into the Bible, the Gospel of Thomas, they say, in the last days, nothing will be hidden. Well, how is this to go? You know, uh, we can't, I mean, we are, we, you know, I mean, we're just 20 years into this particular research as black people. When I say on our dealing with uh, 20, a little over 25, 26 years when we talk about our classical history, you see what I'm saying? Because we were stuck in fundamentalism all those particular years. You see, but, so who else is going to have to write these books a lot of time? Now, we're doing it. We've been 20 years into it, but a lot of, it, 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 it's been a universal aspect and effort to get this particular information out, including white folks and, and people from all over the world. But mainly, at all, but it was prophesied that the Europeans would be the preservers of this particular information. But this is all prophesied in the mythology, as well as I tell everybody to get the Jason and the Argonauts. You can get the movie, you can get the movie 1963, or you can get the movie 2000. Jason and the Argonaut is none other than two things. It's multiple meanings, but one of it is a slave ship to bring the best of the heroes of the Heroes, mm. which you know Horace is a Horace lineage. It is a race. Right, right. The Horace, they say bring the best of the the, uh, of the of the heroes to to caucus at the end of the earth and caucus at the end of the earth to receive the golden fleece and the golden fleece is dealing with alchemy and alchemy is dealing with melanin and dealing with the talents of an indigenous people who've gone through the middle passage in the slave trade you see what I'm saying to manifest into this golden fleece, the smooth 
Ashla, this Christos, this philosopher's stone. It has multiple names, this great work. You see what I'm saying? And so this, the, the mythology tells the stories. You see, tells the stories. And we, why we can make claim to it? Because we wrote it. We, we, we wrote it. They just recently, in 1999, we've heard of Martin Bedal's book, um, um, Black Athena, which started the whole concept of, um, to the European world, of Greece getting all this stuff from Egypt. And basically what he did was is he read George G.M. James's book, um, George G.M. James's book, Stolen Legacy, and from that he was inspired to do the, uh, to do the uh, Black Athena. But later on, there's a book called The East Face of Helicon, put out by um, Cambridge um, University. And in this particular book, they bear witness in 1999, it's been real quiet. And I think it's put out by Oxford University. You know, that's the top shit. Um, East Face of Helicon. And it was put out by Oxford University. I think the, the guy's last name is West. And in there, they had these forums um, at Oxford. And they put out this big book saying that they now know that all the Greek mythology is Phoenician, which is talking about Carthage. Phoenician is first, Carthage, and later on now what you talk about, Libya. Well, it's interesting here because they bear witness that the goddess Athena, which is the basis of Athens, Greece, comes from Carthage, comes from, uh, uh, yeah, comes from Carthage, which is now modern-day Libya. And they even call her the African goddess. But her Egyptian name is Neith. To net, to knit, to knit together. Um, to knit to, to knit together. Um, and Neith is one of four statues that's around King Tut's tomb. Aset, or Isis, Neptet, which is Neptes, a goddess, a, a scorpion goddess called Serket, and Neith. To knit. So this is some um, amazing stuff that is that's going on. I want to talk about a movie, because this is what they'll do. Um, they want to talk about a movie, and when they want to hide something and make it go straight to, um, make it go straight to, uh, um, make it go straight to uh, DVD, what they will do is they will get a star like this. Uh, uh, the star used to be Ann H. Ann H was starring opposite um, Harrison Ford, and she was moving up the ladder, and then she got into that love affair with Ellen DeGeneres. And then Anne Hate fell off because could, she couldn't play leading ladies no more because everybody knows she was, you know, doing the lesbian thing. Then she got out of that and got with, a, with, with some other guy she was with, and then she claimed she started seeing aliens. So, they, you know, they, so she became the laugh of the town. So one of the keys is she started her ascent back into stuff, and so she would be the right one that they would pick to do this movie. And the name of this movie is called Toxic Skies. Toxic Skies with Anne Hate, and it must have been done up in Canada, but anyway, this is a movie based on the chemtrails, and they're finally, and they're finally, and in this movie, they name all of the diabetes, the high blood pressure, the cancer, and all the stuff that's been on the rise since the early 90s, they had named these things, they say that the chemtrails would make these things go, go to an alarming rates so that the pharmaceutical companies can get paid. You see what I'm saying? Among other things, they drop all of the information in this movie called Toxic Skies. But one of the keys with this particular movie here is uh, it goes straight to DVD. And they always do this. They always do this. Um, and I think this is the only way that they could get stuff done in this country. All they say is freedom of speech and all this shit. That's bull. The way that they do this is, remember the movie Enemy of the State and all the surveillance that they had Will Smith up under? And we knew it was a government, it was government structures that was doing this. So what they would do is, like enemy of the state, they just say, well, we got a person that was inside of the government that went rogue. So although we had this capability as the, as the government to, 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 to put Will Smith under this, under this surveillance and all the stuff the hell he went through, it was a person that went outside of the government. Well, this is what they did in Toxic Skies. It's this rogue person from a major corporation. That went rogue, but they, what they ain't what telling you here is, go get the movie Network. And in that movie Network, um, from the 1978, when, it went, uh, um, when it's explained to this guy, he's thinking that this, these corporations are taking over America. The guy said, there is no such thing as America. There's only big corporations. That's all there is. 
So this is very interesting. I just want to put that down as far as topics, guys. I want a few other things before we go to uh, before we go to um, um, go into the uh, uh, question and answer. And let's see here what we're dealing with here. Um, I did a tape called uh, um, Agnada, the Ethiopian um, angel, and come to find out he. he they had one papyrus that had various fragments of his face. Come to find out that Agnator was none other than Michael Jackson also in another life. Um, so we're coming up on, um, we're coming up on um, the December the 25th, which is not a birthday of Jesus, because Jesus is, is a composite figure of mythology that was historicalized. It was never a historical person. You see what I'm saying? A composite figure um, that was historicalized. And his birthday is centered around the god Mithra. Now, Mithra is a, is a hero that comes from Persia and later on Rome adopts, uh, uh, adopts this, uh, 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 this particular uh, mythology. And as a result, Mithra is born in a cave on December the 25th. And he also slays a bull. Well, the bull is Osiris. Mithra is none other than Horus. Osiris being the father of, uh, of, of Horus, and when Horus comes to fruition, he slays the bull, which he slays the age of his father. You see what I'm saying? Because all Horus is is a reanimation or a reincarnation or a reillumination of, of the dead Osiris. So... The dead Osiris is slayed, the bull is slayed in a cave. But well, he's born in a cave, but he, Mithra uh, slays the bull, and that represents, the, the, it represents actually Osiris rising as Horus or as Mithra. But that December the 25th is real powerful, is, is, a, is a real powerful day. Um, uh, like I said, too, we have, like I said, like last week, we talk about these, um, it's ironic that how things go on. We got these new... Um, deities that came came through with the brother from Chattanooga, Tennessee, brother Taurus, and brother Taurus Odom, and he uh, and, and these entities came through these Hawaiian Huna spirits, which I was I was you know I I had already venerated Pele, but she's the most popular. But these Huna spirits came through. Why would they come through on the 50th anniversary of the uh, of Hawaii becoming a state? and the first year of their son, Barack Obama, becoming president. You see what I'm saying, you know. But like I say again, we're not talking about the policy of Barack Obama. That's going to be the same as any other policy that's ever carried out by the Illuminati or whoever. We're talking about something on a spiritual level that has nothing necessarily to do with him and running the presidency. I mean, how in one way, you know that's right, one, way he, one, one month he gets the Nobel Peace Prize, and the next month, he become the war president. You see what I'm saying? So that's a whole other thing when you're dealing with the politics of it. You see, when you're dealing with the politics of it. How much time we got? I'm being mindful of this. Let, mm. me, let, me, let me check right now. We got an hour and 19 minutes. Uh, once again, y'all, to call the number 646-727-2039. If, I think um, I received some messages, people saying the phone lines is full. When we start taking calls, start calling in, the phone lines will start to empty up once we start to take phone calls because we have a uh, jam-packed house tonight, Bobby. Um, yes. Real quick real quick question, Brother Bobby. All right, uh -huh. so with, with all this being said, all, all this of what they're doing, you know, Bill Gates and them going to Africa, everything, they, everything they're doing isn't working, and I'm so happy that brothers like you, Brothers like Panic came through and countered that whole conspiracy thing so brothers won't be scared to death about that. Right, right. It, se it seems like their next move is just, they're, they're just saying, oh, if you can't beat them, join them. And it seems like they just integrating with us. they just, they trying to mix with us. So what's going, what's the science behind well, um, and interracial uh, well, marriage? Well, that's, that's one aspect. But what is, what is actually going, they were, a lot, a lot more, they were a lot more into that during the turn of the decade, we're doing the millennium. Uh -huh. Um, doing doing the millennium. Um, but what what is what is going on now is one of the things that happened with the Dogon. 
um, what has happened with the Dogon and what has happened with some white individuals when they used to go out west during the time with the Indian wars, they would act like they was crazy. And when the, when the Indians would come up on them or the Native Americans would come up on them and they would be act like they're crazy, when they would come up on them, they'd go, leave them alone. That's just old crazy man. Well, that's actually how the, the Dogon, they said, preserved some of their particular information when the Arabs swept across north, uh, uh, the top of North Africa. And if you, didn't, um, if you didn't commit to Islam, you died. They cut your head off. And it was such a magnificent force in the aspect, and I don't want to say ma- let's put diabolical force, until when they came up on the Dogon, the Dogon acted so savage. So they say, look, we don't need to mess with them. They don't deserve Islam. And as a result, the Dogon was able to preserve some of the ancient knowledge that we needed. You see, to bear witness that we were the nomos in the return of the nomos. Well, it's the same thing that's happening now. No matter how bleak it might look, and believe me, it's getting bleak because these niggas have lost their mind out here. <laughs> you see, I, I, I heard a girl call. I said, now, shit, I know this girl, not only she won't get no job when she grew up, but her mama and none about in her family. I heard a girl called Bong Sheka. No. Bong, Bong, Bong Quisha. Bong Quisha. Now, God damn. <laughs> this shit done got crazy. <laughs> Bong Quisha. Oh. I'm like, who, who the hell? You see, but <laughs> nevertheless, no matter how bleak this shit might get, like they kill so, they, say, they done kill more, more children in Chicago uh, this year than Afghanistan. You see what I'm saying? And no matter, matter how, how bleak it gets, now, how, no matter how bleak it gets, you must understand that that is still the decoy. You see what I'm saying? The decoy. So let Bill Gates go on to Africa and let all them, type of, uh, you know, and deal with their stem cells and all this. They thought that they lost this war with us. But in so many words, we need that. We need the decoy so we can do what we got to do. Because this is about us. You see what I'm saying? And it's about the Holy Grail <clears> of <throat> the Golden Fleece. In the West, you see what I'm saying. So, um, so right now when they look and they see our plight, they go look. Ain't nothing left. You see what I'm saying. So that's 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 one aspect of it. Um, that's that's one aspect of it. But believe me, the book still stops here. You see, it still stops here. It's interesting here because um, I'm getting more and more information. Um, if you want to get into it, there's a book called Occult America that just came out, and this book. Yeah, they're dealing with a cold America. Yeah. yeah, they're dealing with Blavatsky and all of them. But they start dealing with Noble Drew Ali in there. They start dealing with Elijah Muhammad and all that. So it's a good book out of cult America and it was and Black Herman, which still needs to be dealt with. And so it's a great book that's out. Wanna give you that. Another book if you really want to understand this whole thing about the DNA, the alchemy, and what the these particular powers have been setting them sights on, setting their sights on, because they have also been trying to track this God race and this new race elevating to the new paradigm. And one of the books to get that's been an occult book from the 1960s, international bestseller that's back out, is you want to get a book to try to understand what their mindset on and what their goals was about as far as to... Uh, and I'm quite sure we must mobilize and neutralize the rise of a new black messiah or a messiah, period. You need to get the book that's just been um, re-released called Morning of the Magicians. Morning of the Magicians. They deal with the whole alchemy thing. Um, they deal with uh, the whole cult sciences and stuff. They even deal with the, uh, a part of what um, Adolf Hitler and them was into. And this whole occult um, occult a uh, war, an occult phenomenon that has been been going on, and since they got into it about maybe 150, 175 years ago, or uh, the stuff that they preserved from the Moors, from the Moors. So you want to get this book called um, Morning of the Magicians by Lewis Powell's, the P-O-U-W-E-L-S, and Jacqueline Berger, Powell's and Berger. Um, you could go uh, uh, Powell's and Berger. And it's more, and it's now back out. So the truth, so the truth is coming. The truth is coming out. Um, uh, your boy, um, um, just put out his new book, 
Uh, um, he just put out his second version of the book. Um, um, I'm going to give him a shout out. Um, R.A. Waldron. R.A. Waldron, God Genes Decoded Volume 2. And so uh, he just sent me a copy of it in the mail. God Genes Decoded Volume 2, The Wisdom of Tehuti and Mayat. Love is the Law of Life, which uh, will be... Um, I dealt with the whole love thing also in my Babylonia series um, tapes that we still have uh, for sale. Um, the whole Babylonia series, Babylonia give one, me, Babylonia your, two. Give, give them your number one more time, Bob, for people just that just came. Yes. Out. Okay. The number is six seven eight three five eight one zero five five. Another thing I want to deal with right quick, and this is one of the things here. Want to give what we're trying to do is give you the access of things that work. Uh, things that work, and we don't we, we because we now know that the Moors made sure when they stayed up in the Europe for seven hundred years that they left their seed. I don't if if you conscious and you white, I don't want you to feel like you exempt from this stuff because I guarantee you right now, um, guarantee you right now there's some things that's actually happening. It's a symbiotic relationship. So, but what I want to deal with right now is also when to talk about black people, melanin, and the moon. We are connected with moon. Melanin is also called Sama in India. It's a plant, but not only is Sama a substance, but Sama is, they say, not only does a king need Sama, not only is Sama king, a person needs Sama in its veins to be king. So, that's talking about melanin. And Sama is a moon god. He's called Kunsu in Egypt. And Sama is a moon god. So the moon coincides with melanin. And if you really want to really start getting to make to access the maximum of your melanin, you need to get into moon magic or what you call moon spells. There's a book called Moon Spells, How to Use the Phases of the Moon to Get What You Want. Um, by da Diane Alquist, uh, that's Diane, then, then A-H-L-Q-U-I-S-T, Diane Alquist, A-H-L-Q-U-I-S-T, -A -A Diane Alquist, and you want to get this particular book called Moon Spells and start dealing with the phases of the moon because that's key to dealing with melanin. You see, dealing, dealing, dealing with melanin and all, you see. And I'm going to start going into some mysteries of Salma, the moon god in the next couple of months, uh, uh, next, co next, next couple of months. So uh, we can, if we can get some phone lines, you can, we right. can do that. Um, get the phone, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, question real quick, Bobby. Um, yes. I noticed I got a Kali shirt on. You, um, it's important for them to get up in that Kali too, coincide with Ganesha. Because remember, she got crazy when he got the head cut off. Yes. Well, you, yes, that, na naturally Ganesha, um, naturally Kali, and one of the reasons by Kali is this. Ganesha's mother is Pavati, and Pavati, Shiva teases Pavati, who is her, his consort, because he, call, cause he calls her the black one, and he teases her. She's called the golden goddess, but she's also called the black one because she has Kali on the inside of her. She's a manifestation of Kali. Now, Ganesha is her son. Pavati's son. And what it was is the reason why Ganesha was a regular child born, a regular god child, but what happened was is Shiva didn't want any kids. So when he, she left him alone one day and Ganesha challenged this um, Shiva when he came back because uh, he wanted to go in the house or something. He wanted to get through and she, and Ganesha was blocking it and Shiva got mad because he, 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 he didn't want any kids to come to, uh, and so as a result, he chopped Ganesha's head off. So Pavati was all upset and all, and so what happened was, if Shiva went to, to rectify it, Shiva found the first thing he could find, and he found an elephant. And so there, thus, Ganesha has the elephant head and all. But the elephant is also all-knowing and never forgetful. And he also have a pot belly. Uh, also have a pot belly. So, mm -hmm. um, oh, which is, also, one more thing. The, um, the hippopotamus goddess. Do you yeah, have anything on that? Because I was Happen. seeing on, I was seeing on TV how they had it where the hippo. Um, I don't know if you watched that show Lost, and that's the only show I ever showed the hippopotamus. It was a big statue on the island that they were lifting. So you can mm. touch on that. Yeah, well, Abbott attire is just it's the ultimate symbol of the Great Mother. 
You see what I'm saying? It's the ultimate symbol of the great mother. Um, you see, there's multiple symbols of the great mother, but in the Temple of Dendera, it is a zodiac. That's, the concept of this zodiac is 90,000 years old. When the Greeks, um, well, it wasn't the Greeks, the Egyptian priests, when the, when the Greeks was ruling, the Egyptian priests actually ran everything. So they would just, uh, the, the Greeks would fund the money, you see, because they got into the whole financial thing, and they got ahead of the finance, so they'd fund the money for them to build a temple. The Egyptians would build the temples that they want, so they took the Temple of Dendera, or the Temple of Hathor at Dendera, Heru, which is also a moon deity, because sometimes you see her connected with the moon, because you'll see the crescents on her head sometimes is a, <coughs> is, is, is a crescent moon. You see what I'm saying? But... One of the things is um, the Temple of Hathor at Dendera, when they was building this Temple of Hathor at Dendera, they tore down an old temple and they also used the bricks, the stones to build a new temple. But when they was doing it, they had a blueprint in the old temple wall, a papyri sheet, that told them the dimensions and all of the meta meta to put back. And that, that, temp, that zodiac of Dendera, that papyri sheet, the concept is 90,000 years old. And as a result, in the center of that zodiac, we see the goddess Apet, Tyre, Tawaret, um, um, in the in the center of that particular uh, zodiac of Dendera. So Tyre is also Tiamat later on. It's also Dendera is Tantera, which is Tara, and Tara the t goddess Tara is all over the earth. You see what I'm saying? So these are just the ultimate principles of the Great Mother, of the Great Mother, and you'll see her. In the center of that zodiac, and you'll see this little dog coming out from her. That little dog is, is the original God set before he fell, but that dog represented the star Sirius also, the primordial star of all time. So, yes, but also dealing with Ganesha, de de dealing with the Ganesha, the reason why he has the eloquent head is also to say children automatically love him when they see him, but it takes an adult to get past that elephant head and so, therefore, you, you, you have to get in check with your ego to, get, to remove that obstacle, which is the ego, so that you can get, in, get past that elephant head and end up getting Ganesha's riches. And so a lot of adults are put off by him and his pot belly and all of that type of thing like that and all, you see, on that particular level. So, um, hey, well, we're we, yeah. we, we going to go into the callers now. We only okay. got an hour, hour left. Uh, the caller number six four six seven two seven two zero three nine. Please try to make your question as brief as possible because we have a lot of people on the line. We're gonna go to the first caller. Caller calling from a seven seven three two two four number caller. Are you there? Yes. Hello. Seven seven three two two four nine six zero oh, seven. Are you there? Okay. I guess not. That call has been on the phone before the phone before the show started. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go to the uh, next caller. I think this is your area, Bobby. Uh, area code six seven eight. Yeah. Six hundred. Uh, caller, are you there? Hello. Yes. How you doing? Hey, uh, my name is Rachel. I just want to say uh, it's a pleasure speaking with you, Bobby. I started listening to you um, two weeks ago. A friend referred your lectures to me. I mean, excuse me, I'm kind of suffering from a cold, but um, I wanted to ask a question. Um, when it comes to all the different deities and spirits, I know you always make reference that they all resort back to one name, uh, ancient Egyptians. Does it matter what we call them? Should we choose a specific, I don't know, culture name for each of these spirits? No, because uh, 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 we are all of those cultures. So whatever that whatever culture that spirit comes through, you accept that culture because when that culture was first birthed, we was there. You see what I'm saying? So we were we were there. You see what I'm saying? So uh, it's like that. Um, um, there's nothing outside of us, so it's not even the whole thing of going back to Kemet. You see what I'm saying? Going back to Kemet, it's it's it, it, it's it's we, we're still talking about the earth. It was one land mass one time and one people, and wherever you go, we are. It's even interesting here because um, even dealing with Kemet, now we know now that the Kamir Cam Empire of Vietnam, or the people who built Inca, uh, uh, built, uh, well, Inca Wat was built for them, they were nothing but another branch of Egyptians. They were an annex, or uh, they were a, uh, they were a, um, a group of Egyptians that traveled to that part of the land, the same Kamea people. We know this now because we know that Anchor Watt 
was called the God Horus Lives. Now, we know that before, and see, the East Indians knew based on the gods told them to build a temple in, in Vietnam because the simple fact here, um, they were these ancient Camille people, but also you talk about a Kushite people. So as a result, this was nothing but their relatives. So at this particular time in the 8th century, Metanetta and all of that had been de defunct. So therefore, um, they built the East Indians built the temple for the Camille people, but it was originally a Vishnu temple, which Vishnu is none other than a form of Horus in Egypt. That's why the temple is called the God Horus Lives, Ankh Horwat. But it was the but it was the it was the the people in Vietnam are, are the Camille people along with the gods from the heaven realm that they corresponded and built these particular temples. We even got people now who are descendants that said that the gods came in and helped build these temples, which gives us some relationship on how the pyramids was built. It was constructed from one dimension to the other dimension. But nevertheless, my point here is, um, deal with all of it. It doesn't matter where it falls. Spirits is spirits. And the spirits exist along with other cultures. And that's what we want people to get into. Because we can become sectarians or just dealing with the actual cultures. You see what I'm saying? So now we've been into the whole uh, Camite thing a little over tw little over twenty something years now, and we got people now that don't want to deal with nothing but Egypt. But what they don't realize is everything is in fragments, and the, and and the, the piece that might fit with Egypt might be Asia, might be East India, might be Hawaii, might be Quetzalcoatl, which is also one of his days, which is uh, which is <clears throat> which is the whole Mayan thing, which is the Mayan slash Olmec thing. Uh, Quetzalcoatl Day is also December the twenty fifth. So. You just just cross reference this stuff and don't get stuck in the cultural thing. Or don't even get stuck in the cultural thing. Even when it comes to the Celtic, which is the whole Wiccan thing, ultimately if you trace them gods back, come from the same damn family. Mm -hmm. from the same? Yes. Okay. Thank yes. you so much. All right. All right. Thanks for the call. Yes. Okay. We're gonna go uh, immediately to the next call. Caller calling from a. Uh, Six four six five two five number. Caller, are you there? Yes, hello, caller. Six four six five two five. Are you there? Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to um to ask uh Bobby if he can uh, touch on um the Maurice Clemens situation of it because he killed four cops. But I just find it interesting that he had killed four cops and and uh yeah. Well, you know, and ran uh, and ran. It, 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 and, more, you know, that's well, you know, some things can be conspiracy, but, you know, down here now, I, in this particular case, I kind of, you know, other than some popular stuff, I kind of, you know, I don't dwell on a lot because nigga could have just been crazy, too. But I will say this. Wasn't this the same guy that, that uh, your boy who was running for president last year, that was the was governor, what's the guy named, that was the governor of um, Arkansas, um, let him out of prison early? Yeah. So my he, point here is um, um, Huckabee, Huckabee right, gave right, him clemency right. gate, you know. So my point here is a lot of times when you you, you got to ask the question, why was he let out early? Right, you see, right. What was, what was, what was, the, what, what was the, the benefit of a Republican, a Republican governor giving him clemency? Or give, you, know, or, you know what I'm saying? My point here is, um, so you can look at all that and stuff, but my point is such a cesspool down here. You see what I'm saying? He could have been crazy. Could have been MK also. It could have been several things like that. You see what I'm saying? Um, right now, on this particular thing, we can get so caught up in all the foolishness that's going on down here until, you know, sometimes it's a distraction. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, I mean, hey, and then again, our people just snap and go crazy too. But then again, on the other hand, you got to realize this is there was a several people to kill each other in Chicago, all those children this year, it just so happened to be the state that Barack Obama came from. Um, we now know that HARP has a lot to do, which is one of the keys. Remember old HARP, the weather modification? Well, they also, that HARP is also based on mind control and MK Ultra. So they can cut on the heart of a certain city that they want to focus on. And before it was Chicago, it was Philadelphia for the last four or five years. You see what I'm saying? So um, this is designer mass murder, and a lot of this is also done by the um, by um, MK Ultra. 
but also heart is a part of that too, which is this whole weather modification or mind control modification out over there in um in, in, in Alaska and several other parts of the world. It's just interesting when you get this particular movie, um, when you talk about the chemtrails and, and toxic skies, it is interesting that the chemtrails was adding to a virus that actually broke out. And they couldn't cure the virus until they found out what the stuff that the, that, that the planes was dropping out, that was dropping out of the planes and stuff. So the chemtrails also have something to do with even if the, the swine flu, like I said, it ultimately was going to come through the spirits casting these negative things into the pigs. When it became airborne, it's directed a lot of times, you see what I'm saying, by the chemtrails. Mm. So wash your hands and wear your hats. Yeah, you I, I, got some, I got some of that Tuja that you have, you've been talking about. Yeah, fresh Tuja leaf, yeah. That, and I've been yeah. using it. So my point here is, is um, basically most of the news is designed to be that way. Mm. You see, it's I, designed to be that way. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yes. So so I don't I don't rule out anything, but, I, but shoot, I do know that at this particular time, we got crazy people, period. You see what I'm saying? You know, like I, I just saw this movie, uh, Obsessed, with Beyonce oh, yeah, and the I guy Idris movie. Elba. And uh -huh. um, the, the, the behavior that the, the, that the white girl was doing, I said, damn, I, I come in 95, in 99, I had been given a blueprint of the same behavior that happened every year during training camp with the new football recruits from pro football. <clears throat> and it, it don't just be white women, it be black women. White women and people from all over the world, they come from all over. They, and so how long that boot camp? They'll get a hotel for three months. And they and, and for three months, and they do anything under the sun to get those football players to, to marry them. And when I look at this movie the other day with Beyonce, I'm like, you know what? When the sister was telling me the blueprint on what they do at, these, at the football camp and the basketball and the baseball, and she was telling me that these people set up in these hotels, I said, damn, I would damn if this girl ain't doing the same thing in the movie. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But they do. Yeah. But they say every year they, they got women come from all over the country. They go to these the, 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 when these these rookies come in, and these other fo football players get back, and they will do anything, and they will stay there as long as it the season, as long as that preseason or whatever it takes, or uh, that training until they go into preseason. Pre they set up camp. So what was happening there was also a blueprint, <clears throat> a blueprint. You see what I'm saying on what they on, on what they do. It's the same flim flam game, same as the Ghanaians and the, the the Caribbean and all them do to get people to marry them in this country for the green card. They got they got to call it the flex, the flim flam. They, you know, get a fat black girl with a low self esteem, raise her up and call her the goddess of the universe, and she marry them, and they bring their whole family over on their ass. Same flim flam, but it's the same thing going on in the football camps. And you saw a glimpse of it in that movie Obsession. Do anything to get that professional man. You see what right. I'm saying? So and so it, 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 you know, it, and so it's it's it's, it's a universal shit. Yes. Yeah. All, right. All right. Thanks for the call, brother. Yeah. We All right. Get to the next call. Okay. Hey. All right. We're gonna get to the next caller, y'all. Uh, caller calling from uh three one three seven three six number. Caller, are you there? Yes, caller from three one three seven three six. Call are you there? I'm just listening. Okay. okay, brother. Thanks for listening. Remember, people. Also, this is a time for Obatala, the Yoruba deity that governs the head. Obatala, the god of white, that governs the head. He is the ultimate pineal god. He's the ultimate pineal god. So, if you have got any headaches, or if you want to get some clarity on things, you want to do some healing, just get in the bathtub. Uh, pour you some coconut milk in the bathtub, get you a white candle, and then take you and, and take you another can of coconut milk and put it in your head like you got shampoo or in your like you shampoo in your head and set in that tub for fifteen minutes. You see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, um, for fifteen minutes. And all, uh, yeah. And and, and 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 he deals with the whole crown chakra and that will enhance the crown cycle knowledge, pineal gland, the whole nine yards and open up some of those areas called the epithesis gland. In the in the in the brain, um, you see. So Obatala, remember that real key at this particular time. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. brother Bobby, real quick before we get to the next call, brother Red Pill from New York, he wanted me to ask you to expound a little more 
on the uh, hate crime on the hate crime bill. If you could, yeah. Ask, okay, that, the hate. Okay, this is what's happening. Good, you said that, but that's of the utmost importance. Uh, the hate crime bill was put in. They used the skinheads. They used the Ku Klux Klan, the young Ku Klux Klan. Uh, they used the skinheads, and they used them to pass the bill through. Now, Barack Obama has signed the hate crimes bill. Well, most of the people, they, 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 they are use them to pass the, the, the bill through, but this bill now is now more than ever passed for the simple fact it is for what they call neo-terrorists or the terrorists. And in this particular case, uh, they're talking about even if you stand on the corner talking shit, then that's a form, if you offend somebody, that's a form of a hate crime. Now, they've got this thing. They've had this thing in, in London for years. Farrakhan is banned from over there. Chuck D is banned from over there. You see what I'm saying? I think Chuck D was banned, banned because he said the follower of the Farrakhan on the second album. You see what I'm saying? So they had this thing for years over there, and a lot of this thing ain't got nothing to do with you a terrorist. That could also got to do with what you say. And if you offend somebody, that could also be a, a hate crime. So therefore... Um, all the Hebrew Israelites and all these Black Panther part, all these people talking shit, you got to understand that goes under the hate crime laws now, and your options are not what they used to be. And I've been telling people for years to get off the street, you see what I'm saying, running their doggone mouths and stuff like that, because as of the last couple of weeks or the last month or two, the hate crime bill is in effect, and a lot of times, it's just like the guy, um, I, what's this guy named? He's a real big, um, he'll come to me and then the Ku Klux Klan guy. And he even told, um, he even told Reverend Buffon, um, uh, what's your boy name? Uh, you know Reverend Buffon, um, from New York. No, no peace, no, uh, what's your boy? Al Sharpton. He told him, yeah. don't you know that any bill you pass for me is for you? So therefore, this bill is passed, but we are the ones that's gonna get the book. You see what I'm saying? Or the chastisement of that. So at this particular time, be careful on what you say, because you might offend somebody. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so therefore, if you look at the real specifics of this hate crime law, that's opening your mouth on verbal abuse is also a part of that. You see what I'm saying? So time is out for all of that bull. You see what I'm saying? Because the hate crime bill is here. And the hate crime bill is also goes up under the terrorist bill and all these so and every last one of these black groups is a part of that terrorist bill. You see what I'm saying? So you, you do your little uh, UCC up under the guise of the Moors, that's a part of the doggone terrorist group. You see what I'm saying? You see, and they're going to jail all over the world, but now the hate crimes is here now, as well as the terrorist crime, and there you have it. So I'm just trying to tell you what time it is. You see. Okay. We're going to uh, go to the next caller, uh, from the 347-679 number. Caller, are you there? Brother Rich, this is me, Eric. I'm just listening. Okay, thanks for listening, brother. Hey, don't, don't click me off, Rich. Keep me online, okay. brother. Okay, brother. <laughs> Peace. All right. All right, caller from uh, 314-865 number. Caller, are you there? Call us here. I say peace to all gods and goddesses unknown. Hey, listen, peace. Bobby, peace. you had dropped a long time ago, and I'm glad the brother asked that question about them murders. But years ago, when you had started dropping on that, you said that the energy is escaping the, the human body, especially in the black people. So I think a lot of that got to do with the fact that this change that's coming, what we're moving into in terms of the new elevation, is causing these things to happen, of course. That man got his thing out here working on our mental all the time, like you explained about the heart and the mazes and all that, and that's still working. But you had dropped it years ago, and you said the energy getting so strong now to this escaping the human body. Because I look at these brothers out here, man, and sometimes they don't even look like they straight. That's the one thing I wanted to, you know, say about that. Well, also I, you have to look at this like uh, the Highlander movies. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And I got the more a uh, more person head get cut off, the more the other person get quickened. Right. You see right. what I'm saying? So the more these people die, the more it's an ally. It's just like the Obi Wan Kenobi said, "You kill me, you know I'm only gonna get stronger." 
Only gonna get stronger. It's only only gonna get stronger. So it's just like Michael Jackson. It's just just like Michael Jackson. Bobby, you can go on. I'm gonna mention two quicker things because I know y'all got callers in peace, and this is the first time to the show. And I'll go quick. Thanks for mentioning Harry at a lat because I read that about 15 years ago. They deconstructed that woman's whole damn body. Yeah. all the way down to get all of, you know, the fundamental elements out the black woman. And the, in the city where I'm at now, 314, people know what city that is. We ain't got to discuss that. But the cracker had built a building over here and spent like $20 million of it off the college across the street from the abortion clinic. And Planned Parenthood got in here and was giving the sisters abortions. And they was taking the fetuses and running them right back over across the street and experimenting on it. And there I you go. And every, 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 every major university is by some black area, including yeah. Yale. By some Even black area right around the corner yeah. from the hood. Yeah, and they go right. straight across the street with us, so I tell these sisters all the time, and they know it's problems with the wound. But I said, y'all better get into some ancient healing. You tell them all the time, there's healing for the wound, there's healing for the spirit. But I'm going to let y'all talk off the air in yeah. peace to y'all brothers. Bro. All right, they brother. Well, it's all here. good. They doing it here. Yeah. Well, it's all interesting right. here because yeah, even yeah. when we talked about Obi-Wan Kenobi, and he said, if you kill me, it's only going to make me stronger. Well, that's what happened with Michael Jackson. And mm-hmm. he got out of that body. He went and dealt with that dog on Cracker, who extorted him out of the twenty million dollars. That guy's uh, that guy's father. That guy ended up um, um, committing suicide. The guy from '93, yeah. the first rape case. Yeah. And it was the, it was the father because the son had already admitted it. His his father made him do it, and as a result, that same father committed suicide. That was Michael Jackson. Got in his ass because he had more power outside of the human body. And the BC Boys. Yeah, that whole thing, too. Your brother came to, came down with cancer. Yeah. Term, uh, 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 phrasing the term wacko jacko. So it's like you, you deal with it, but on the other hand, just like Marcus Garvey said, I'm coming like a whirlwind. I'm coming like a whirlwind. What people don't know, although they blew up those levees, Katrina actually hit Mississippi the 50-year anniversary of Emmett Till. And Mississippi and Alabama is the one that really got messed up. And 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 and, and New Orleans weathered the storm. But it was on the same time of, of the around the birthday of Marcus Garvey when he said, Look for me in the whirlwind. So there's things that's actually happening. You see, on that ancestral realm. You see what I'm saying? Hey. Hey, Brother Bobby, I see somebody in the chat room had said something. Uh, this remind me of what you was talking about as far as the hate crime. They said, uh, is YouTube a setup to see where black people are at? Well, what do you think about the whole YouTube thing and brothers airing out everything on YouTube? Um, well, I'm going to be honest with you. It's so much on the Internet until the country would go broke trying to damn catalog all of it. Uh-huh. There's just so much stuff. You just must understand this about YouTube and all the rest of the stuff. It was prophesied in the Gospel of Thomas and in other ancient texts that knowledge would increase and that which is hidden will be revealed. There will be nothing that was hidden will be revealed. And we just in that age of it. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying now? In that age of it, we must understand Yes, yes, there's a lot of stuff on the YouTube, but that goes with the territory. But nevertheless, we are in that age of revealing. That's what revelations mean, to reveal. You see what I'm saying? To reveal. And so nothing would go unheard of in these particular days. You see, so basically that's what that, that, basically that's what that is. Now, yes, you got all types of people on YouTube, but it's nevertheless, it still provides the voice. Take for instance, I was at the top of my game in the lecture world. As of, as of the YouTube, I've got a whole newfound civilization. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so that means that these, these, this stuff was prophesied to be this particular way. You see, so, you know, I know it's spirit. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it wouldn't happen. You see, so, yeah. And, and everybody listening, I know a lot of people listening Please call this brother to get his lectures from the 90s, his classic lectures. 
Y'all don't know what y'all missing out on. And I regret, I lost some of them. I had them on uh, VHS. I used to get them from uh, Big Man, Shabazz, Sarnetto, all of them. But if y'all don't have Brother Bobby's lectures from the 90s, uh, y'all missing out on a lot, man. This brother was Kobe Bryant in, in his prime. So call the brother. Uh, <laughs> give, him the, give him the number one more time. 678 1055. And like I said, you can also get the picture packet, the angelic, sti angelic stimulus package. Um, you know, uh, people always need that uh, financial stability. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we're going to get to the next caller. Keep it moving. Caller number 646-727-2039. Call in to talk to Bobby Hammond. Let's get to the next caller from a 216-798 number. Caller, are you there? Yes, caller from a two one six seven nine eight number. Are you there, caller? Okay, I guess the caller's just listening. That's cool. Uh, uh, Rich. From, yeah. Yeah, real quick, let me ask Bobby this question real quick. Um, Bobby, there's a powerful energy that I just got to find out the name of that I got to find out surrounding me. It's called um, the Caribs. I've come to find out there's some Indians that's here in America that was called the Caribs. Uh, do you know anything about that? Because it's yeah, some real, Dr. real powerful uh, energy. Yeah, the Caribs. That's where Caribbean is named after. Yeah, the Caribbean is named after, uh, and Dr. Ben tells us that the Caribbean is named after a group of indigenous people that was exterminated. Yeah, so that's here right. you got here now <clears> is these <throat> entities coming back. Just like the Hula spirits. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That the brother Taurus was talking about for Chattanooga. Now the Caribs. And if you're getting that particular information, that is, that is that return of the great old ones. And those cows is none other than an offshoot of the Omex. It all comes together. You see what I'm saying? But they were, they were, they were some of the people that were exterminated. You know, so they were real powerful, man. They come in. They real came powerful. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, even <clears throat> Haiti, which they found out was a part of Atlantis, even Haiti. They talk about an indigenous people that was there before the Haitians, and it's a real powerful spirit, real powerful spirit. We could even, uh, we could even say that La Santissa Mamoete, the goddess of death, um, or the god of death, one or the other, that La Santissa Mamoete would be one of those ancient primordial Omekian spirits when you take it back far enough. So, yes, real powerful, the Caribs. So, basically, you just basically you do an invocation and call on the Carib spirits. But if you but, but go and do the research. If you can find an ancestral name, that can be as a god. But if you can find a god, that would be even better. But go do the but but in this particular thing, if you can't find the gods, if it's so old, try to find some names of these particular um um, um spirits uh, in in the guise of ancestors before they wiped them out, and that would act just as good as a god force and then invoke them. Because this is all returning of the ancestors. Yes. All right. Give me some calls. Let's, uh, let's get to the next call. Uh, caller from an 804, area code, 804-926. Caller, are you there? Just listening, bro. All right. Thanks for listening, brother. All right. Uh, next caller from a 256, area code, 256 eight three call are you there <coughs> yes call us on the two five six area code two five six two five six i'm just listening brother okay. all right all right y'all gotta have some questions for brother bobby i know y'all got some questions for him now uh call us from uh oh this is a private number here let's see uh call are you there from a private number and I guess they want to know. Well, let me say about. this. Um, yeah. This is the time. This is the time for Bess. Bess is Bess is the, is the Egyptian god that that is also from the Twa people. It's called the, the pygmy, but it's originally the Twa people. And Bess, um, Bess time is right now. Bess ain't, um, end up becoming the god Pan. He becomes the leprechaun. Um, is a form of, of, of Bess. And his time is this particular season uh, right now. 
because the symbol that best represents the quantum world, the spirit world. And so this, this, this particular season here, we're going into realms bumping together. So also pay close attention to the God best. If, 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 you, if, if you see the leprechaun, that's the form of the God best. If you see the Greek God Pan, which is the Phoenician God Pan, that's the form of best. Um, that's also a form of best. Um, so, uh, um, very key. And also, Bess was found at the temple of, of, of um, Inca Wat, as well as Urzuli and Oshun at the temple of Inca Wat. You know, yeah, so all of this stuff here um, we, we, we're dealing with. And remember, I was talking about last week about this whole thing about the swine, and the swine is now, was, was this energy of the ancestors putting all of their all of their issues and all of their karmic patterns and stuff for the last thousands of years into the swine, which contaminated the swine and made things go airborne. But they also talk about it, and I was trying to, it is a book, The uh, Isis Thesis um, by uh, Judy K. King, and I was trying to remember last week what was the name of this gene. It was a, a swine gene that shuts down all spirits. That's why you don't need to eat the swine. And the name of this uh, gene is called the hedgehog gene. Mm. And it's a gene, and the Egyptians talked about it, because this is a whole, this is coming from the Egyptian text. It's called the hedgehog gene, and it shuts down the body. You know, so this is, I, I, I couldn't remember it last, last week. So give me some questions. Okay, let's get back to the phone lines. Uh, caller from a 347-413 number. Caller, are you there? Yes, greetings. Greetings, uh, Brother Bobby Hemet. Yes. Just wanted to shed some love into the room tonight. Thank you, Brother Rich. You know me. I come and see you, buy your videos, and support you as often as I can. I want to say peace and blessings to Brother Panic, to uh, Sister Rain, and also uh, Miss Blue. I love you all, and I appreciate the knowledge that you guys go forward and share. Peace and well, blessings. Well, all right. All right. All right, yes. Yeah. Peace. And, um, you know, like I said, we are... Uh, we we pay homage to just about anybody who has something to say other than attacking each other. You see what I'm saying? So that's that's one of the deals. You know, so that's 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 great. Um go 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 visit the man's site down there in Brooklyn, right? There was a flat bush in the cab. Uh no, uh full in between um what is that? Uh Hanover Place and Bond Street. Yeah, go down there and access the access, you know, Go and see what the brother has and stuff. He got some, you know, uh, all different types of libraries and stuff, you know, things that's actually happening. You, you right. See, yeah. Okay, so. let's get to this next caller. This look, I, I, this look like an international call or something. It's a 442086 number. Uh, caller, are you there? Hello. Yes, how yes. you doing, caller? Where you calling from? I'm calling from London. All right. Okay, how, how you doing, brother? You got a question for Brother Bobby? Yes, I do. Um, I wanted to know more about, uh, um, or if, if uh, Brother Bobby knows about uh, the Mutapa Empire in Southern Africa. Yeah, Mama and, Mutapa. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Do you know anything about that? Or um, um, what I do know, what I do know, um, the person who, who who was the expert on it and talked about it was Doctor Ben. Um, and I think the uh, what's that uh. Africa Mother of Western Civilization talks about it. Um, we the Black Jews talks about it was one of his things. But you want to access anything by Dr. Yosef ben Yakinen, he is the one who dealt with the Monomotapa stuff um, of South Africa. So the, um, luckily, but like I said, uh, Mother Western of, uh, Mother Africa, the Mother of Western Civilization, I think is the name of the book. The other book, We the Black Jews, was the name of, uh, uh, was, was a part of that. And it might be a couple of ones, but the person that you want to research that dealt with Monomotapa would be Dr. Ben. Thank goodness. Dr. Yes. Ben. Um, I, I wanted to know more about uh, like, um, the, uh, the, the spiritual side of it as well. Uh, if if, if uh, they, there's any, any spirits, you know, which are kind Well, you know, to... you can also you can start with accessing Quaker Mutua, you know, um, although the, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, David Ike wanted him to go one way, he went another way, but his stuff is still valid in the particular aspect that some of the things that Quaker Mutua said was right. ended up coming true. And so you uh, want to get any stuff by him, 
um, um, access some things, access some things by him, um, you know. And remember now, there's never nothing truly lost. You can always tap in if you can, um, you know, get any of those particular deities and come and and bring them through, like Unkulu Kulu. Yeah. Un Unkulu yeah. Kulu, and we also know that Unkulu Kulu later on be uh, later on ended up in H.P. Lovecraft dreams as Cthulhu. So the whole Cthulhu mythos will yeah. also be <laughs> South African mythos. The yeah, whole great yeah. old ones and stuff, but Unkulu Kulu is actually, um, Cthulhu is actually Unkulu Kulu. I so now, that. on the other hand, one way you would also do it, because you can always retrieve this information that is always in the acoustic records. Call on Unkulu Kulu, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, if you can get any, any, any good readers, if you if you can do it yourself, but if you can get any any good readers and bring them through, and then make a transmission and get some of that particular history back, because none of that is never truly lost. Oh. Um, none of that is never never truly lost. I was talking about a guy um, uh, last week. that was talking about you know black people, and no matter how much they express themselves, um, uh, if they disappear off the earth, the earth won't last at all. But um, the name of that guy's book was called Explorer Race, and he was channeling a deity called Zeus. Not Zeus, but Zeus, and the guy's name is Robert Shapiro. If you could get that book, Explorer Race, and I think he wrote a couple of after that one, but that first one, um, Explorer Race, and the one after that by Robert Shapiro. Um, but it's also talking about this transmission where he goes these thousands and thousands and thousands of years of black history. And this is a white guy. You see what I'm saying? So you can also bring that particular... It, nothing is never lost, and you could also channel those energies in and get that particular history, and that's what we, 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 we implore you to do. Since it's, since, since it's something that you're interested in, it means that those particular spirits are calling on you for that. Just like the, the spirits was calling on the brother based on the Kara thing, and just like the Huna spirits in Hawaii is calling on the brother Taurus in yeah. Chattanooga. Yeah. They're trying to come through. So in so many words, what this thing here is, is break down that in Kula Kulu, and in actuality, bring those spirits through. Bring those spirits through, and then, and then, and then, then give a detailed thing on some of the history. Nothing is never lost. You see what I'm saying? Nothing is never lost. It just exists on another plane, in an invisible plane, or in an invisible college, they call it, of the invisible library, which we know as the Cossack Records. I hear so, that. nothing is lost. And so, don't fix anything in your mind that we lost anything. We didn't lose nothing. It's still there. It's just like a woman now channels a deity in Ethiopia called Arseti. Arseti. We know that Set was a primordial god that came from Ethiopia. It was the god that Osiris and all them got their attributes from before it was turned into the devil. Now all of a sudden there's a woman in Ethiopia channeling a deity called Arseti. And then all of a sudden, this, this, this march, Aknator, or Aknakir, Aknakir, pops up. You see what I'm saying? It pops up. And I talked to him. You know what I'm saying? We got, we, we got the transmissions. And he's the Ethiopian angel. And I so did a lot of these are coming, they, they're coming through, I mean, I mean what, what's going on? They, are they starting to come back or, or they, what? They, it's, it, everything is the return of the gods. Now, what they do here is a lot of times, and I'm going to tell you what they do, and this is what's happening. A lot of times they will not come in transmission with you if you don't have a tablet and a pencil and a piece of paper. So you get you a long tablet, and, and when you let them know that you are sure and you're serious about them coming through, then they'll come through. Right, you right, see what I'm saying? Right. A lot of times they're not going to come through if you're just walking around and they got some ancient primordial stuff to say yeah. and, you don't ha and you're not, that you don't have the tools to document it. So w what you want to do to show that you're serious about this is to go and buy you a nice, um, a nice tablet, a nice um, a, a, a writing book. You see what I'm saying? And, uh, show that, uh, and then they will come through. And you, you invoke them and they'll come through. But a lot of times uh -huh. they're not going to come through if you're just sitting up there and you're not going to catalog it because this is cataloging for us. You see what I'm saying? That's all I've been doing for the last 18 years, 19, yeah. 20 years. It's cataloging stuff for the people. It's not my knowledge. It's the people's knowledge. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's and so that's what you need to do. And so what you do is you get you a tablet, a nice tablet, you know, and the first thing you do is you open the front page and you put Unkulu Kulu on that baby. And then, after that, you wait for those entities to come through. And that's how we're going to get this particular information. 
You have been yeah. sanctioned. Appreciate oh. that. All Appreciate right. That. Definitely going to get oh. back with you. Definitely. All right. Peace. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yes. Okay, once again, y'all, we got 28 minutes left. The call-in number is 646-727-2039 if you want to talk to Bobby Hemmett. We're gonna be try. We're gonna try to get this brother to New York sometime within the next uh, few months. So uh, keep on the lookout for that. Uh, we're gonna get to the next caller. I think this is Virginia, seven five seven area code seven five seven two five four. Caller, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How you doing, brother? You got a, a uh, question? Yeah, I'm doing fine, brother. I'm doing say, Bobby. Hey, man, I appreciate the information. I've been following you since uh, since uh, from from back in the day. I was. Watching, uh, yeah, and for the people in the Birmingham area, I'm going to be in Birmingham, Alabama this weekend. So uh, 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 check around and stuff, and you will be able to come up with the flyers and all that should be out. You okay. see what I'm saying? I just want to put that out, a shout out. I'm finally going to get to go to Alabama. You know, I've been all over the country. The only place that eluded me was Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana. I was able okay. to do Louisiana right after Katrina because Shreveport, Louisiana, half the Katrina victims was there. So I went there in 06 right before my mama made the transition. And so Alabama's next. So I finally get to go there, you know what I'm saying, and follow that path with Martin Luther King and that whole civil rights thing, you see what I'm saying. But I'm going to the place where them four girls got killed. And so we're going to be dealing with that energy this weekend. So what's that, uh, brother? Uh, hey, uh, hey, Bobby, I had a question, man. Um, oh, do you know anything about Omec uh, Omec prophecy or, you know what I'm saying, or like, like we, we talk about the minds, but... It's like it's hard to find research on on, on the Omec. Yeah, well, there's there's only the big heads. Mayan prophecy is Omecian prophecy. Aztec prophecy is Omecian prophecy. Okay, um, now, is, now, it is Omecian now, prophecy. Now, now, how does that connect to the Washitas and all that? I mean, I mean, because I know the Omecs are descended from the Dogons. So, you know what I'm well, we okay. do, well now because the Dogons. A little bit later than the old mix. Old mix is very primordial. As a matter of fact, when you see them oh, heads, man. when you see them heads, there, okay. those heads. The reason why you don't have a lot of writing and stuff, because those heads used to be when the gods used to walk the earth. Okay. Okay. So when you see them heads, that was a primordial time of the gods. We talk about Atlantis. You see what I'm saying and stuff. So oh. it goes back a little further than the Dogon. You yeah, see what I'm I saying? Because I was listening to a uh, to a lecture by the uh, by the Empress. And she was saying they you know saying that that the Omex, you know, saying descended from Mu, you know, saying that I yeah, well, Mu, well, Mu is Mu, Mu, Mu is Mu is is years, thousands of years before the Dogon, okay, you know, okay. thousands of years before the Dogon. Mu is Lemuria, and and Atlantis and Lemuria, and when you see those heads over there, that is a form. That was a time of the time of of of, of Atlantis and Lemuria, and stuff. And also, we could even say that's when the Earth was one land mass. So we okay, so so okay. it's it's long so it's so primordial that the only way you're gonna get some information again is like I told the last caller you're gonna have to tap into the transmissions yeah, other than the Mayan that. stuff and all of this you're gonna have to tap into the transmissions to to pull some of that up and maybe that's why you're asking okay. this question maybe you got your goddamn orders you got your yeah, sanction yeah. now get okay. the piece of paper write them old mess down and tap into the transmission we have to start looking at this thing as a spiritual approach. You see what I'm saying? And pulling stuff down off these acoustic records, or what they call okay. the Hall of Records. The Hall of Records are inside your brain, and you got okay. access to them. But when you ask the question, it's actually a transmission. It is a channel. It is your soul saying, hey, why don't you do it? Because you're not going to really find much other than the later stuff, because this was a time when there were the gods. And Atlantis is nothing but the fall of the split of the male and the female split in half in the fall of Isis and Osiris as one entity. In so many words, it's nothing but the, d the deepest regions of your soul and okay. stuff like okay. that. And you can tap in and get that particular information. Okay. So, okay. so I, suggest you, I suggest you get you a writing pad, get you a big picture of the old med head, glue it on the, on the front of that um, um, writing pad with that, glow, uh, that old med head, and then take that old med head and write on that first piece of paper the old med. And when they find out you serious, because now all the stuff is returned. When they find out you serious and stuff, because they're not going to come to you and give you no damn transmission and you ain't ready to document it. You see what I'm saying? And when you document it, share what you find. 
You see what I'm saying? And then connect the dots with the with 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 with, with this, or with the Aztec, the Mayans, the Inca, and all of that type of thing on going on into the Washita and all of that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I ain't gonna tell y'all, brother. I do appreciate y'all uh, yeah. taking a call, man. Hey, um, I, I know one thing, man. I, I, I'm down in in Virginia, man. I mean, you got like, tons of people just waking up. I mean, people just. Well, yeah, waking yeah. Up. Well, they, they're waking up every day. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you know. Yeah, they. You know, they're doing it. It's it's prophesized. You see, one wave woke up, learn the information to text, teach the next wave, the next wave, wave wake up. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, so people waking up every day. Well, that's great. Hey, you know. Hey, brothers, man, you, you, you brother have a, a blessed night. Rich, man, I appreciate your show, man. All right, thank you, brother. All right. All right, All right y'all take it easy. Peace. Hey. Hey, brother Bobby, what you think about the people that wake up? And then two years later, they go right back to being dead. I mean, they go into the information hard, hard. Yeah, yeah. But what happens here is, once they learn it, they can never get it out of them. And as a result, they can they can go back and nod off, but it's there. And when the time for it to be there, it's gonna be there. So they just came in, got their plate of food, and got their care package, and then they went back and nodded off. But nevertheless, they got that care package. You see what I'm saying? So when it's when it comes time and somebody that's dead beside them going, what the fuck is going on? They can go, well, get this is what's going on. I went and got this care package a couple of years ago. You see, and <laughs> went back to sleep. Right. So it's the same thing. It's the okay. same thing. Once you learn it, you can't forget it. You see what I'm saying? Now they can go into remission. You know, they can fall off the wagon. It's just like a 12-step program. You see what I'm saying? They can have a backtrack and fall off the damn wagon, but nevertheless, they know the truth. So, yeah, so that's cool, too. You know, th that's cool, too, you know. Somebody yeah. in the chat room asking, um, Brother Rich, can you please ask Bobby about the karma and fate of the white people and the so-called, uh, what does it say? Hold on. And the so-called uh, con so conscious white people. Um... Well, you gotta realize, like I'm saying I, now, I don't, I don't, I don't know the new, yeah, right. I know. The, the, okay, right. The new, new information in is you don't know what karma gonna be on anybody because you can't tell based on physical appearances no more. Because of hell, in that case, we got physical black people there, and the majority of them you meet is deranged. You see what I'm saying? So, and they got karma. For millions of years. So my point here is, my point here is I don't think that that should be the focus. I mean, yes, it can make you feel good. Yeah, they're going to get theirs and they're going to get that. But then again, on the other hand, the Bible tells you that from the get-go. to do. Whoever going to get theirs is going to get theirs. But ultimately, you're going to find out this. You're going to find out that every player in this game was supposed to be a player in this game. You see what I'm saying? We were supposed to have what we were supposed to have to make a certain human. So there's an old saying in the Cthulhu mythos, the mysteries of Shanga Fong. Shanga Fong is this ancient primordial deity. And the mysteries go that one day the white man will come and get Shanga Fong from his primordial place and take him to the white man's land and nurture him. And after he nurtures the Shanga Fong, Shanga Fong, after he's nurtured, he will rise up and destroy the earth. So what is the nurturing? The nurturing has to do with everything we did here in a milling process to make a new human. And in order to make that new human, even the Dogon talk about, there has to be a certain amount of suffering. To make something new, you have to take which is what is old and make it destructive. So in so many words, we couldn't do it. We was too human. Or we was too, we was too, um, the prototype of what humanity was. We had to take a younger person, you see what I'm saying, to even make this diamond even more dense so that it could doggone manifest into a new ferment, a new crystallization. So when you really think about it and all, when you really think about it on the bigger picture, see, I'm not talking about the bigger picture. It's not personal no more. You see what I'm saying? When you really think about it and all, ultimately down here is a low state. And by it being a low state, you see what I'm saying? Everything that has happened down here happened for a doggone reason. 
and stuff like that. So my point here is you, you, you don't know who is what and what is who. The key here is if, if you are conscious right now, you need to focus on your path because mm. everything down here is going to go where it's going to go. Right. You see what I'm saying? Everything going to go where it's going to go. You see what I'm saying? Even if you destroy that, what you call is conscious. That you, that you call that is that that is evil. You actually changing the process of it and putting it out of its original state. So in any way that wins, if everything wins in this change. Everything wins in this particular change. You see what I'm saying? So that's that's what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, another uh brother, I see brother Red Pill in the chat room. He want he wanted you to elaborate more on the. Uh, Ancient gods being re reincarnated right now. Into, well, that's uh, what we, ain't nothing to elaborate on. It's a reality. For the mere fact that we're talking, mm -hmm. we're ancient gods. We mm -hmm. all knew each other in a past life. You see what I'm saying? It, it, everything is returned. You see what I'm saying? It's all one. We just don't know it. Hell, the whole kingdom is one. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? The actual kingdom is here now. They say that the kingdom is spread out upon us and we just don't see it. Because our concepts of what that is, guess what? It was we were never local in the first place. We were never long distance in the first place. We were one, and our reality is based on our concepts and our knowledge to get past this illusion. You know, it's all right here before us. We just don't see it. So that's. That's past tense. We are the ancient God. This, this conversation that we're having right now, and whoever is listening in on, I don't give a damn what race you are, that's a part of the ancient aspect of it. Because my point is, let's even take white folks. If this was not for them, they would have been there hung up the damn phone. You understand what I'm saying? So the ones, you see what I'm saying, that's understanding this and trying to get this particular information, you're supposed to get this particular information. You see what I'm saying? So now I'm into looking at the bigger picture because what has happened, the whole racial thing has already played out and that has already been done. And we have all, and what it was is we have now gotten to the threshold in the doorway and ain't no need to even talk about some shit that we can't do nothing about. You see what I'm saying? We're at the threshold in the doorway and we're supposed to be looking into this particular doorway and we're worrying about all kind of bullshit that's past tense. You see what I'm saying? Even with the, even with the fear thing, 90% of what's going to happen to us, we ain't going to never know it's going to happen to us until it's too damn late. So we don't even need to focus on that. Because guess what? It has already happened. This is the end part right now. And so it's all about the return. It's, it's, it's been happening. Hell, I've been talking on it for goddamn 20 years. But it is here now more than ever. It is here now more than ever. You see what I'm saying? It's just that we can't be distracted. Like I say, take a notebook. This time, take a notebook and make you a magical diary and jot down every little thing that you might think is spiritual. Might think is spiritual. Your car might break down. Your car might break down. But up the street, there was going to be an eight-car eight, eight car pile up that you was going to be in a part of it. But your car broke down, so you didn't get into the, 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 the pile up. You see what I'm saying? And then come to find out it was just some old carburetor or something being clogged up, or you just ran out of damn gas. That's a spiritual experience because the, the spirit was stopping you from getting into something where you weren't going to have a car at all. So you got to take, so what you have to do is you have to take a notebook and you start writing down things that you think is spiritual experiences. As a result, you will find yourself living in a spiritual world. Living in a, um, uh, yeah, you know, living in a spiritual world. Like we, went, we went to print some some, some pictures and print some other things, and the guy said, yo, man, the little card that you're going to put in that's going to count all of your stuff and the money you got on, he's like, hey, man, you just go ahead and print because the machine broke up, so I'm just going to put it on regular auto, and you just print what the hell you want. You see what I'm saying? So we made off like a fat rat. But I'm just trying to say, start jotting down these spiritual experiences, and what you're going to find out here is that this kingdom that you're looking for is all around you. You just have to be acclimated to it. And in order to acclimate it to it, you just got to start putting together the fine details. You see what I'm saying? Because spiritual things happen to you every day. Every day. You might spend $200, and $200 come another doggone way. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes somebody will call us and 
send us the $40, and we go, guess what, man? You just paid for our dinner. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You just paid for our dinner. You see? Now, Somebody, now, is, it, I'll go ahead. Is, is this about, what? what's the objective down here? Is this about unity, or is it about personal transformation? Because for some reason, it seems like we just can't unite. It's, and a lot of people in the room, I heard Red Pill in the, in the, in the chat room talking about personal transformation. What well, is what it is, is it's, 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 it, it is a unity, but the unity, it's just like anything else. You might have one tree, but every branch on the tree is not alike. Every leaf on the tree is not alike, but it is alike because it's all attached to the tree. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? It's all attached to the tree. See, even when you call turmoil, uh, you turmoil, and all honesty, the turmoil got you to thinking. It got you to ponder questions. If things weren't, if things was going so easy, you see what I'm saying? You might not ask the question, therefore you might be in the dark. So in so many words, it is unity. So so many words, it is, it is unity. Let me give you an example. We were much better people when the white man had his damn foot on our throat. You ain't lying. We were united like a motherfucker. <laughs> you ain't saying? You see what I'm saying? We was united like shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The cat left the damn house and the rat is in turmoil. You see what I'm saying? But nevertheless, nevertheless, ultimately you got to realize this particular thing. What, what's going to happen going to happen anyway. It's going to happen anyway. So that's what we need to focus on. You see, that's what we need to focus on. You see. Okay. So, yeah, okay. give me some questions. Okay, we got ten minutes left, y'all. Time goes by so fast. Um, call the number six four six seven two seven two zero three nine, brother Bob. Before we get cut off before the ten minutes, give out your info one more time, just in case we don't get a chance to again. And I got to give out that information too, Rick. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. you can you can hit me up at six seven eight three five eight one zero five five. Hit me up to try to get these to get these packages all. Unfortunately, this is not a line for hobnobbing. Don't call this damn line. Want me to give you no goddamn lecture. You see what I'm saying? Buy the damn lectures and learn yourself. So this ain't no questions if you get your goddamn big toe start hurting. Don't call me up. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? If your wife doesn't put some goddamn grits on your ass, then you got to deal with it a certain doggone way. But this is not a line. This is a business line to get the information out to the people. But it ain't. It, it, but it, it's not, hello, I'm listening, Frazier Crane. You see what I'm saying? This is not a psychiatry lane. Like, I can't give you no answer to your goddamn Lorraine's ass anyway. You see what I'm saying? You know, so that that's what this uh, is about. Man. I need to do that. So it ain't no thing to pull up and say, hey, I want to ask you this damn question. No, ask yourself the question. You see what I'm saying? Because it's something you got to get through. So, uh, uh, yes. Uh, we we going to get to the next caller, brother. Uh, caller from a 201993 uh, number. Caller, are you there? Yeah, peace, brother. Rich, brother Jahar. Peace, Bobby. Yeah. Peace, brother. Yeah, I have a question. Um, as you mentioned that um, Jesus Christ and Mithra has something um, in common, I wanted to ask you about Jesus Christ and his name being Yahshua in Hebrew and how he yes. have a connection. Do he have a connection with um, Alegba because Alegba name and um, is Ishu. All of that Ishu. In the mythological phase, Jesus say, I am the way. Alegba is the way to the lowers. You can't get to the Father but through the Son. Well, a leg bar, you can't get to the lowers or the Orishas but through a leg bar. Ishu, Yeshu, it's all the same if you understand it in mythology and understand that it wasn't no historical person, then you will understand that Obatala is the Christ. Shango is the Christ. Ishu, a leg bar, is the Christ. Different components. There's seven chakras and seven African powers. You see what I'm saying? So if you understand this thing, see, what, what throws us off that we can't find the, un, the commonality because you're still thinking of a historical person that never existed. That is a Roman invention to throw you off. Christ was an attainment. You attain the level of Christ. Just as I have done great works, greater works ye shall do. Is it not written in the law that ye are gods and the scriptures cannot be broken? John chapter 10, verse 34, 30, uh, 36 or whatever. God standing on the congregation of the mighty and judges among the gods. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And he called them gods. But the point I'm trying to make here is we've been duped by a 200-year program in Roman society to historicalize sublime mythology. And as a result, it shuts all the other gods out 
that's got the same attributes that are in you. It's only telling you proponents of your own self. And the Christ is the, is, is the attainment. So when I say Obasara is the crown chakra, that's the same crown chakra you see when you see that halo around Jesus' head, but it wasn't a historical person. They were talking about a person in the future. And that person in the future is called the Horus lineage, a race of people that will live in the last days called, there are pre-existing spirits that will live in the last days and reestablish Maya called H-E-M-M-I-T, Temple of Dendera, Hemet spirits. Hemet spirits, Hemet beings, Hemet beings. We're talking about a race of people. If anything, the, the prophets came through because I'm a Hemet, born Hemet. Didn't change my name to Hemet. You see what I'm saying? Came up yeah. from Egypt to the Gnostics, to the Gnostics in France, from the France to Iowa, from Iowa to the amalgamation of the Creole, Oklahoma, Hemets, Arkanaut, and Stella's found in the same doggone thing where my ancestral line re goes all the way back to Kemet. I can trace the shit. You see what I'm saying? But the point I'm trying to make here is that the, but, but, but the Christ was an attainment of a race of beings that will reestablish Maya. Do you know the word Maya and Christ is the same if you understand it on the alchemical thing? So in the Hermetic text, they say it will be a group of people in America that will reestablish Maya, the Christ. Maya is the coming together. They tell you reciprocity and all that. That's the, they got different, there's, there's those laws. But in the alchemical and the advanced spiritual, it's the coming together of the great works called Maya. It's called Tikkun in Kabbalah. Humanity finally growing into what it was supposed to be because the human, human process was an uncompleted process. And once it's completed, it's called Mayat in Egypt, the Christ. You see, Christos, a crest, the crest Horus. You see what I'm saying? Or the hero Heru, the face of God and the great face of God, Pineo. You see what I'm saying? And it had shit to do with no human being running around in the Middle East getting slaves. He died as Osiris. He died as Tammuz. He died as 17, 18 crucified saviors. You see, but, it, but he lives in this coming together now of the modern-day Horus lineage. And anybody that's got some consciousness right now is a part of that. That's why you can't go based on skin color or how black you are. You know, you know, I got more melanin. That's just melanin in your melanocytes. If you black or the black of the ace of spade on Africa, that's to protect you from the sun. But we're talking about some shit in the central nervous system, the golden fleece, the alchemical aspect of this thing. In the West, the son of man is the sun in man. You see what I'm saying? And so that's what that is. But don't even trip on that, because see, y'all still bring that to a historical person that never existed. Yeah, but you are right. Yes, you were an issue. You even got Jacob and Esau, the two brothers. You see what I'm saying? That's Horus and Seth. He is uncle. But the two ye brothers were Jacob and Esau. Uh, but Esau is issue, and issue is a leg bar. All this stuff comes together. Okay. Yes. Right, we, we, we got I thought I'd appreciate okay. that. Peace. Yes. Thanks for calling, Brother John. Uh, we, have five, we got five minutes left. We're going to get one more caller, Brother Bobby. Um, mm -hmm. Real quick, Miss Blue is in the chat room. She wants to send her love to Brother Bobby. Much yes. love to Miss Blue. She's been helping me a lot out tonight in the chat room. And uh, go check out her show on uh, Blog Talk as well. Uh, you know, because Geronimo yeah. talked about a blue god. As long as he had that blue god with him, he couldn't lose. You see, that's Yemen, y'all. You see, that right. blue deity, Lapis Lazuli, the blue one, Krishna, you see, it's all good. All right. Mm -hmm. we gonna, we, we gonna, you there, Brother Joel? Yeah, I'm waiting to give out that info real quick. Okay, okay. We're we're gonna gonna get, we got four minutes left. You, you want to take one more caller, Bobby, or you just want to yeah, get into yeah, the info? Yeah, we can do it, yeah. All right, one more caller. Caller, let's uh, be quick with the question. Caller from a 480-223 number. Caller, are you there? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, thanks for taking my call. I just wanted to ask Bobby about uh, how we just ended the fall equinox and uh, all that Tiger Woods action was going on to distract the uh, black folks. 
Well, you know, like I said, you know, things are going to happen. A lot of these things, you know, you know that nigga was dipping his goddamn wick, his, his dipstick. You see what I'm saying, you know, and just got caught up in some stuff. But then again, on the other hand, my point here is that I don't really, I don't think you should look at the basic, uh, the basic general news um, on everything to, 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 to fair our way. Whatever's going on there, our shit is rolling, believe me. There is a world that is continuing and has been going on, and it's not, it's only a distraction, you see what I'm saying, uh, if, if, if we let it be one. Uh, uh, if we if we let it be one, you see what I'm saying. There's always gonna be some shit going on because that's how they make their money. You see, that's how they that's how they make their money. You know, they locked OJ up and they found out they was lonely without him. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You see, ain't no money in locking them up. You see, they was lonely. Oh, you see, Michael man. Jackson couldn't whip him over no more. You know what I'm saying? So you know, hey, next on the next up to walk the plank, hey. Snigger Woods, it's your dog on <laughs> nigger wake up call. You see what I'm saying? But my point here is is all that it's gonna be more. It's gonna be some other things. You see what I'm saying? They will just MK Ultra will create a Chris Brown to knock another woman in the damn head. You see what I'm saying? And all and it's gonna be some other things. But my point here is it's always gonna be those things. And all so yeah, you know what I'm saying, you know, on that particular level. But I don't think it got nothing to do with the fall equinox. Hell, that shit there is happening anyway, you know. But there's a whole spiritual part, and these niggas going to be acting crazy throughout every damn equinox and every solstice. You know, you see what I'm saying? And especially when they eat all that damn pork this time and that doggone, and and, and, and that uh, that uh, vaccine open up in them with a time release, and then they got to go and get another doggone serum to cure them from the vaccine. And all gets paid. You see what I'm saying? You know, so, yeah. All right. Interesting. We, we, All right. We got uh, we got one minute left on one, brother Bobby and Joel uh, to give out that info they got to get into. Thanks for the call in, brother. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead, Joel. Joel, Joel, with that. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, it's one o eight East Twenty Eighth Street. Um, the phone number is two one two six eight four 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 seven. You get the Ganesha statue real cheap. Also, now that's for people. That's for people in New York. Yeah, um, they can call it up spots in New Jersey and other places. So when if you're in that Philadelphia, up, if you're in Phil, yeah, if you're in Philadelphia, you go to South Street to the Garland of Letters. They got a Ganesha statues. But if you are in the rest of the country, go. If you got Ross in your area, Ross is a store like uh, uh, like Marshalls. Go to go to go to Ross. Go to Marshalls. Go to T, go to TJ Maxx, especially the Christmas season, because TJ Maxx put out a lot of Egyptian. Statues, and they, and, and it's in another part. They got a new discount store that's on the level of Ross and, and Marshalls called AJ Wright. Is in the southern part of the country, and they got Egyptian statues. The Burlington Coat Factory got it, uh, Egyptian statues. So they're gonna have a lot of them at TJ Maxx. So get your statue, but you're gonna find some Ganesha statues there. That's the he elephant head deity. You was gonna uh, uh, name another place? Yeah, re um, real quick. You wanna get yourself a stone called Azizulite. A Z E Z T U L I T E. Those white people are all up on it. Look it up. You want to get an next stone called Rhodazite. Look up those two stones. You see what I'm talking about. Those is a must have. Yes, and you can always contact me because I, I sell pictures of Ganesha. So if you can't get those, and I'll contact me, but you got to get it in the picture pack with a, a hundred. It's a hundred pictures for fifty dollars, but there will be some pictures of Ganesha in there. And that's six, seven, eight. Three five eight one zero five five six seven eight three five eight one zero five five and also there's the God Hanuman. There'll be a picture of him because that's also a connection. So uh, that's the monkey, the monkey king. All this shit is hot right now, but right now we own the Ganesha chip. And also <laughs> we we got about twenty seconds left. Uh, I want to close out the people in the chat room going crazy action for another hour. Uh, just keep in contact with the website. You never know what we you know what we might do. But like I said, we definitely trying to get Brother Bobby into New York. Um, thanks for calling in. We love all the callers, all the callers I could have get to. I'm sorry. Um, give well, I'll, I'll be also doing another one for um, Brother Waldron soon. Um, um, doing another blog talk. Uh, yeah, like I say, he 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 paid his money. R. A. Waldron, <laughs> and so <laughs> we might be doing something in the next uh, week or so. Uh, a week or two, so just keep your ears open. Like I said, what we're gonna do is, as panic is, 
It's told me a new system. We can go through his uh, command central and all. Uh, you see what I'm saying? And um, like I said, you know, and um, he, this, this stuff will be pro, pay, pay, uh, posted on my Facebook, uh, Panic's Facebook. So also that's, an, that's another link. Yes. So we'll be back. Same bat I'm channel, same bat time. Hmm? Big up to Brother TJ, a.k.a. Vishnu. Oh, yeah. Right. Yes, Brother T.J., definitely. remember now, I'm going to be in Baltimore on the 19th, so we'll be hooking up with T.J. also. So it's all good. All right, thanks for calling in, y'all. We love y'all, and we'll see y'all next time. Peace. Yes.